I'm sorry, I am a little bit late. Mondays, I have a sweet little meeting with my friends, with my other business cohort members. And sometimes, you know, we're running a little over. We're always talking about some good stuff and it's always exciting. So, uh, you know, I just had to hop off of there. Come say hello. What's up, Rollers? How you doing today? Andrew Graphic, welcome. Uh, B. Edwards, it's always good to see you. How you doing today? So, we're finally in the week that people have probably been waiting for, which is sweet, sweet infrastructure as code week. Uh, it should be pretty, uh, should be pretty good. Uh, well, it's not even just this week. I think it's the next two weeks, actually. Uh, I think we're gonna be diving into infrastructure as code. Uh, we are going to take our microservices that we created, our microservice poly repo architecture that we already have set up, and we are going to be converting it to infrastructure as code. We'll be talking a little bit about what that entails tonight, planning it out a bit, uh, and we should be able to get started uh, writing a little bit of infrastructure as code. Uh, we were going to do some, um, well, we'll talk about exactly what tools we're going to be using, and uh, we'll figure out how to make this stuff work. But I hope everyone had a great weekend. Uh, weekend was good except for yesterday uh yes well yesterday was good for the most part last night around 10 something p.m sitting right here in this chair getting ready to do some work uh and then the whole house shook uh pretty pretty violently uh actually and for the second time in two months a house exploded here in baltimore uh this one maybe this the other one was maybe a mile and a half two miles away from us uh it was actually right across the street from my uh my in-laws house so that was pretty wild um and this time it was maybe 100 yards 150 yards from our house pretty wild they say someone fell asleep uh smoking a cigarette come on now i mean people fall asleep with cigarettes lit cigarettes all the time uh, i don't think their homes blow up luckily there's been no fatalities which is a good thing so we're praying that it stays that way uh, i think five people in, were in the house five people were injured pretty wild stuff um but you know super eventful stopped me from doing my work actually but uh yeah i mean besides that pretty good weekend i got a lot of work done had a lot yeah right that's the, like yeah how is don't why would you put that out in the news like that's that's obviously not what happened like yeah i appreciate that it was it was pretty intense like man like and, it, and then they decide like they haven't and a lot of the news outlets are just saying it's a fire uh with a possible explosion everyone who lives around here is like no no no, no. like we're telling you it exploded <laughs> like the house exploded we all felt it like this was no i don't know man it's, it's really weird it feels like something's happening and they're covering it up i don't know you know but now now i'm at a risk because i'm now speaking the truth out to the world but i yeah i'm glad we're okay as well um you know has it's a little bit scary now you know it's a little bit scary if houses are just blowing up all around you like it's definitely a little bit scary but can't live your life scared on the edge but yeah we are gonna hop in let me see we do have some slides tonight let's get on over to actually no, i have a couple more things one i don't know if anyone i don't know if any of you are in here but uh uh today we had four interns start at mastermind officially all signed up all you know you're gonna get introduced to all of them they are uh, all they're all engineering interns um that's to give them the opportunity to do a bunch of different things here and um, I also got to, you know, not, not an official employee, not an employee, but, um, I, I needed some help. And so, um, I got a COO, a COO for hire off of Upwork. And I'm super excited about that. Cause they took a lot of stuff off my plate. Y'all, you know, I really underestimated how much random little crap there is to do running a business. Um, and you know, I, I learned, I learned really fast and I luckily I had the opportunity to have someone take some of that stuff off. So good question about Terrence. Terrence is around. Terrence is around. You will see Terrence. Uh, Terrence is around. Terrence is not the guy for that stuff. Uh, Terrence is, he's, he's one of us. He's one of the engineers. Um, he's around. He'll, uh, you'll see him. Ugh. House's code wouldn't, you, I agree. And if it did happen, uh, we would be able to get it right back to the same consistent state that we had it in. What's up, Steve? First off, yeah, right, exactly. First one, first one was at their house, but this one is this one's literally right there. We drove around as soon as it happened. Like once we realized what was going on, or, uh, once we heard all the sirens and stuff, we drove around there. Uh, first off, let me say this: one advantage of having a big a big red truck. I do own a big red truck. Um, they definitely, as they were starting to block stuff off, um, they definitely. I either assumed, 
I was, you know, a part of the, you know, the, the EMT team or the fire team or whatever. Cause they were like, letting me go. They were just like, letting me through. And I was like, yes, thank you. I'm, I'm royalty around here in the big red truck. But then I got it out of there because, you know, you didn't know what else was going to happen. And it actually got pretty intense. Smoke was pretty wild. Um, that's why I'm really glad. I'm really surprised, you know, like, oh, like people are only like at the hospital. I'm, I'm pretty pretty surprised there are no fatalities for how for how violent it felt uh but yeah yep i oh, appreciate it you know you gotta rep nasa you see nasa back there as well you know space is great we gotta get some spacex stuff um i mean yes definitely 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 a hoodie you know a little, little bit of you know gotta stay warm out here it's pretty cold out here in baltimore today but uh, we gotta get some spacex stuff i am a fan of space for people who do not know i'm a fan of uh everything space related Okay, so let's actually get started because I want to be able to take our time with this. That's why I'm glad we have two weeks and I hope we actually have two weeks. Let me actually make sure we have two weeks. I'm 99% I'm sure. Some coding guy, welcome. Thank you so much for the right on time with the early raid. I'll let everyone get through. I think I have pre-roll ads enabled, which I keep meaning to turn off. Uh, no one told me until recently that I could turn them off. Uh, you know, the ad revenue on here is not good anyway. It doesn't really matter, um, but I definitely gotta get it off so that when people do raid me, I can say hello and they can chill. Yeah, you can turn them off. I didn't know that. Um, I'm pretty sure you can turn off pre-roll. I don't think you can turn off ads. You can't turn off ads completely, but you can turn them into like something else, I think. Oh, they show anyway. Well, then maybe you can't. <laughs> that makes that makes sense. Um, yeah, but I would like pre-rolls to be off um, for sure. So what are we in? We are in, yes, week four. We are in now. So seven, eight, nine, and 10, two weeks. Infrastructure as code concepts gonna be very, very, very exciting. But what's up everybody from Some Coding Guys channel. I think you're through your pre-roll ads. Welcome, welcome. We are just about to get started. We are, uh, we're, we're LARPing, we're LARPing here. We are going through a boot camp right now. Um, this is week four of eight. Uh, we're starting week four of eight right now. We have some infrastructure. We are working at a company called Pipelines and it's a media company that goes Goes toe to toe with medium.com. They have a, a platform called Conduit, which allows us to allows people to author articles on there and they need some help. They have old legacy infrastructure. We've now turned this into microservices. We've converted it from a mono repository to a poly repository. And now we are about to take that stuff to the next level and uh, codify all of it. We want all of it to be code. Uh, infrastructure and everything is built by hand and we're gonna talk talk through a lot of those concepts tonight. I've never gotten any ad revenue on Twitch. I mean, I've gotten like, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I've gotten like 67 cents of ad revenue on Twitch. Not really, <laughs> it's not really a big deal. It's really that, it's not very good. Um, so I, you know, exactly how they make money if you turn them off i would happily turn them off so that people didn't have to deal with them but well thank you so much for the follows everyone what's up and steffi welcome uh iris how are you doing uh, voodoo vado vado capra welcome to the channel calvin and ander greased ander geest welcome to the channel i appreciate you all being here good to have you okay so that's what we're gonna be doing tonight and let me get you the slides for this evening because you know if we're gonna do any work, we gotta have some slides. So we can learn a little bit before we get into the process. What's up, AI? How you doing today? I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the gift of subs. Everyone who just received a gift of sub, please thank your gifter. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate the support. Uh, that's love. The raid and the rate and the uh, and the subs, the gift of subs. First off, I should have shouted you out when you came in here, but mentally I was behind and I was getting myself together, but let me give you a shout out. I got my keyboard over here. There we go. I typed it in perfectly the first time. Uh, also, this brings me to one more point before we, uh, before we get started is that something's wrong with my custom keyboard. <laughs> Something's wrong with it. I don't know what's wrong. It's something wrong with the port. I thought it was the cable, but it's not the cable, it's the port. And I'm hurt. I'm I am hurt. I am genuinely hurt. And and so it, it still works. It does work. It's not broken, but I have to like um like if I'm if I move the, the keyboard at all, like once I have it working, it'll probably stop. 
working so i mean honestly this at this point um i might order a new pcb and i might have to do some soldering but that's fine it's not a big deal um i am using i'm using a mac keyboard right now but it's a, it's it's, a, it's mechanical it's, it's it's brown switches uh the problem is the command key and this alt key are swapped so i keep making mistakes every time i try to play some games i would actually whenever i was trying to ping something with alt i would end up uh alt tabbing out of the game and it was pretty trash you know oh no oh no hold on hold on oh video did stop all right try to give it a refresh yes this is absolutely because i spoke about that i don't know what happened i do see that uh my stream told me that it died but it didn't say why it died it says it was trying to reconnect it failed to reconnect properly but everyone give it a refresh everyone come on back so you can see my stupid mac keyboard this is uh it's actually a pretty good keyboard um it's it's you know it's something that i got a long time ago um my wife has been using it but i stole it back because what was once mine is always mine no i'm just i mean she just wasn't using it you know but uh hey mary joe how are you doing tonight mr demon wolf how are you doing iron fist hello hello everyone what's up uh, bedrock michael um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hurt. I'm gonna figure out what's wrong with, with my baby so that we can, uh, you know, I can go back to the life that I'm used to. I'll get it all fixed. But how's everyone doing tonight? It's good to have you all in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get started because we've been talking about a lot of stuff that's not infrastructure as code and we need to learn about infrastructure as code. Doing better now, gave me a fantastic sub to this amazing channel, I, again, some coding guy, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you that it, it means a whole lot to me. All right, we are gonna get going with Pipelines, a journey into software delivery, automation and infrastructure. We are on night seven of 16, let's go. What's up, Cofish? How are you doing? We are about to learn all about infrastructure as code. Here we go, here we go. Today's topics the what and the why of infrastructure as code, uh, infrastructure provisioning, configuration management, scripting, and let's plan this out just a little bit. I think it'll be pretty fun. Let's do it. So why are you here? You're here to learn all about infrastructure as code. What is it? Function build me a server. And this is essentially what infrastructure as code is if you are someone who knows what a function is. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. But infrastructure as code is the process of managing and provisioning computer data centers. So computer data centers through machine readable definition files. We'll stop there. So it's the act of managing. So um, keeping track of and making sure things are working as intended and provisioning. We'll talk about provisioning, but that is the creation of new computing machines um, of data centers through machine readable definition files. So these definition files are texts that are readable by a machine. And that, that's what allows us to do these things rather than physical hardware configuration or interactive configuration tools. So. All infrastructure as code is, is rather than managing a system manually and through uh, actual tangible hard devices, it's using code to provision and manage these things instead. All right, so why would you wanna do that? You know, why would I want, like, first off, you may not understand how that could even happen. Uh, tonight, I think you're gonna be able to fully understand what that even means. Um, but why would you wanna do that? Why would you wanna replace hardcore tangible computing assets and their configuration uh, why would you want to replace them with code and that's because it does a number of things which we're talking about now so it creates a consistent that's a keyword there consistent and reusable ways to deploy and manage infrastructure assets and configuration the keywords two keywords there are consistent and reusable so if you were to codify infrastructure if you were to put infrastructure into code it means that it'll be consistent so you know it, you can rely on it um, and it'll be reusable so you can use it over and over again why is that consistency so key it's so key because 
people like me, and I use this all the time, these right here, these are what you call fat fingers. And fat fingers can cause a company to lose millions. Uh, and so, you know, we we're, we make mistakes. We are, are we, we are fallible or are we infallible? I don't, I don't know which, I don't know which one it is. I'm sorry. I'm not an English major anymore. Oh, I never was an English major, but, uh, yes, we make, we make mistakes. We 100% make mistakes. People make mistakes. And so if you can get something to be consistent, um, and, and you know, put it in a way that, you know, these hands don't have to keep uh, doing it every time manually, then we, uh, we really save ourselves some time and reusable. Uh, there's a lot of times we'll have to do things over and over again, especially in this new world. And we're going to talk about that right Right now, the new world not being so nude anymore, but it's still uh, worth speaking about. Um, and so notice it says to manage infrastructure assets. So these are your things like your networks, your storage devices. This is your, um, this is the actual um, uh, EC2 or I don't not, These are the virtual machines and things like that and their configuration. So not only the actual provisioning of the thing, but also the way that they're configured, the way that they are set up. All right. Very important there. The second one is it helps prevent configuration drift. What is configuration drift? Once again, back to the fat fingers, okay? Configuration drift is when, uh, let's say my company has 10 servers, 10 production servers, and maybe we go to do a deployment. And during this deployment, um, someone who goes in, I go to update five of them, uh, someone else on my team goes to update the other five. Maybe this person's first idea, maybe the first thing in their mind, just cause out of, out of habit, they go in and they do a sudo apt update when I don't do a sudo apt update, and then they do an upgrade just cause they're so used to doing that. And they accidentally upgrade some packages, and I do not do that to any of my five. And we, we you know, we push our code out, everything looks good, but they, these five servers have upgraded packages and maybe a package that was upgraded now is incompatible with the application that we run. And now, you know, we're supposed to, everything looks good. It looks like we have all the stuff and stuff that we're supposed to have, but these servers are operating differently than these other ones. Or maybe uh, someone was troubleshooting and logged into a couple servers, was checking some logs, maybe added some print statements somewhere and couldn't figure it out. Um, but then they left that stuff in there. They forgot to clean it up all the way. Configuration drift is when the server configuration uh, begins to drift from what it's supposed to be. And this is a very common occurrence through manually managed servers, okay? So people who are managing servers manually, this is a very easy thing to create, a very easy thing to happen. So you gotta be careful when we're talking about that. Um, why are my PVC uh, keycaps so shiny? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe did you did you uh, did you shine them up? Did you gloss them? Did you put a little bit of oil on top and rub it around? Because if you did, then it's there. Oh yes, we could get the slides updated. Let's do that real quick before we actually finish the slides. Let's get it updated. So let's give you the share. Let's make sure the world can get it. Got it. Mastermind. Anyone with a link? Copy the link. Done. I have to for some reason. And all the processes that I do, this is the one that I have to talk myself through every single time. And let's do uh, commands, edit uh, slides and paste it in there. There you go. You got it. You can get it. What's up, Chai Fruit? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much. And again, Mary Jo, thank you so much for the host. Codefish, thank you for the follow. Coolix Knight. Welcome, Benja Jovial. Welcome, GB. Welcome, and 88 Opus. I missed the resub for 12 months, one year. We've only been, we haven't been streaming for much longer than that. So I appreciate the love for that long, the love and support. Uh, good to have you around for that long. All right. So now that you got it, let's keep going. The other six episodes on this, are they saved as videos on Twitch? Uh, they are on Twitch, but I think they get, I think like the first half of them gets muted because of the intro music. Uh, the first three or four are on YouTube and I have to put the other ones, they all go up on YouTube. If you hit exclamation point YouTube, they do go there, um, but I haven't got them there. And yes, hippo buckles, I have tried them, but I only found one McDonald's that had them. I try to stay away from McDonald's, but I was in for the spicy nuggets. They are very good. They are not good with sweet and sour sauce. They are good with barbecue sauce. Just so anyone wants to go, if anyone has to have them, now you know uh, that I'm the authority on spicy nugs. 
I, you know, I, I had to try it out, you know, I, I and I really do try not to eat McDonald's because if you all don't know, I'm, I'm on the new people to the channel. I am here trying to look like The Rock. Uh, Kala, what's up, man? I didn't even see you in here. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good night. But yeah, I'm trying to look like The Rock and The Rock does not eat spicy chicken nuggets or at least he doesn't tell the world that he does. And so, you know, I, I, I'm i trying one day, one day. I'm nowhere near, like if you guys could see the belly down here, you know, I'm, I have a long way to go, but each day each day you know inch by inch life is a cinch and that's what we're working on right now okay wasting my life on twitch go ahead ask away ask it before we get started again and i'm not saying that is an interruption or anything what's your thoughts on wordpress nothing um it's a good question it's a, it's a, it, that's a nuanced and complicated question i think it depends on your use case i don't think there's anything wrong with wordpress i personally do not like to manage wordpress or wordpress sites um why uh anything that allows you to do things as easily as wordpress uh, means that if you have to manage it yourself, it's difficult. Uh, my advice is that you, if you are going to use WordPress, use some type of a uh, managed service for WordPress. Do not uh, try to manage it yourself. I find it to be very difficult, uh, especially if you're going to be doing any type of custom development inside of it uh, really hard. Now, WordPress runs a substantial amount of the internet. So if you are trying to, people have asked me, should I get into WordPress development? I don't particularly like PHP. I wouldn't want to do any WordPress development, but absolutely it is a viable career option. There is a lot of work for it. You can always find someone who needs some WordPress work. So, you know, nothing wrong with it. I think WordPress is great. I, I've used it for a couple of things. I think there are some easier options if you are a little bit more technical right now. Um, they're like, I think, I think static, Hosting is the way to go for a lot of informational sites, whereas WordPress, you know, used to be the way to go for static sites, but WordPress, well, not static sites, but just informational things that people wanted to update, really easy to get up and running. Uh, but I think WordPress, you know, it works. It does work. Yeah, see, I, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I've had a lot of, uh, I've had a lot of pain with WordPress, Drupal, all those, all those, you know, relational database back CMSs are annoying. I love headless CMSs like Strappy. That is, that is the world that I like to live in. Uh, I love that stuff. What's up, Box of Ninjas? Love the name. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much. Also, Scott Stemo, thank you so much for the host. Uh, I do appreciate it. All right, so here we go. The two things we are talking about, consistent and reusable. This is why infrastructure as code is good and configuration drift, it prevents it, uh, it prevents servers from having different configurations on them. Now, this is a big one that I really love. Uh, developers are inherently bad. Uh, engineers, every engineer. I don't care if you say you're amazing at documentation. Yes, you might be amazing at writing it. You probably don't do it often or you do it often and you write terrible documentation, but this gives you free documentation. Infrastructure as code gives you free documentation. Again, you are codifying your entire uh, infrastructure. And so if you need to know what's there, if you're like, hey, I don't know what we have, you look at the code. Now, it's not as easy to read as the traditional documentation you're used to, but things are not gonna get lost in the sauce. If, if you were to build your infrastructure via code and walk away from it, Ne to never come back your your boss makes you angry the ceo makes you really mad and you know you got to walk away you got to walk out of that door uh they would be able to hire someone else and that person would be able to come in and uh with relative simplicity understand at least what is going on um now whether or not it's good you know uh, but uh it is free documentation speed is key uh, you know, doing things manually is slow and infrastructure as code allows for things to happen uh, quickly. And the last piece, which is great, is this automated infrastructure portion of this. Uh, you can now, because it is code, you can automate it. You can, uh, you can do things to make uh, events happen automatically, deployments happen automatically. You can automate the creation uh, of infrastructure and that is really, really, really dope. Now, infrastructure as code, it is not only for the cloud, but it has been essentially designed around, it's been a design because of the cloud and around the cloud. So usually when we're talking about provisioning infrastructure and stuff, we are generally talking about in the cloud, but uh, these tools have also been uh, retrofitted and 
um, setup to also work, at least provisioning tools to work with uh, on-prem things as well. So they, it's not on, it's not cloud only, even though they're usually talking about the cloud. Um, when we're talking about at least provisioning, uh, configuration management is a little bit different when we do get to that point. Kid Queb. Shout out to Kid Queb. Uh, another, we are, we are, this is a great Monday for Raids. Uh, welcome, it is good to see you. Hold on, let me uh, let me get you, your shout out in here. Thank you so much for coming through. We are just talking a little bit about all the infrastructure as code stuff. Uh, I do appreciate the big raid of 45. Welcome everyone from Kid Queb's channel. Come on in, say hello. Uh, you know, meet the people in the chat and, uh, you know, hang out for a little while and learn a little bit about stuff that can make you a lot of moolah. This stuff can make you the big bucks, okay? So that's why, that's if you're looking for a reason to stay, stay because you can make the bucks, all right? Uh, life's good. I cannot complain at all. Crazy busy. You know, I, I, I don't think I've, I don't think I've talked to you in a little while, but I did leave uh, my my lead engineer role, you know, my, my team lead role uh, to work my business full time. So it has been incredibly busy, but already it's already paying off a lot. So it's pretty dope. <laughs> we are talking about WordPress and SharePoint. SharePoint, I have different feelings about. Uh, I'm okay with WordPress. I'm not okay with SharePoint at all. Not okay with it at all. Kikweb, thank you so much for the tier one sub. I appreciate you coming through. I really do. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's exciting. It is. Uh, I've been working on the business for over two years. Uh, I'm, I'm also not like I didn't just jump out there. I'm I'm in a uh, I'm, I wasn't I went through a business incubator for two years building it and doing some cool stuff. Uh, so it's been exciting, but it has been a uh, it's been a journey for sure. People say Ansible replaces Chef. Is Chef not used? We are gonna talk about that in a few minutes, actually. So keep that question, little mortal. That We're gonna answer that question perfectly. All right, keep, keep in mind the whys. The whys are important, let's move on. So these are the pillars of infrastructure as code. And this is actually, um, there's, a, there's some few little, um, supporting beams that hold up these pillars. Uh, and these are the pillars as I see them. I think that, I think some people will throw some other things in this list, um, but these are the main pillars as I see them. And I think that all of the tools that we know about, I think they mostly fall under these three categories. So what are the three categories we're talking about here? The first one is infrastructure provisioning. We're gonna talk about exactly what that is. The next is server and software configuration management. Okay, so we have provisioning, and then we have server and software configuration management. And last one is scripting, okay? So we've got a bunch of cool, we've got three different things here. They all serve the different purposes. Let's learn about those purposes. All right, um, before we learn about those purposes, I forgot this slide was in here. This slide needs to be here um, because these tools, there are a lot of tools uh, in the first two categories, infrastructure provisioning, and server software management, they provide, uh, th usually there's a bunch of tools that offer this. There's some other ways to kind of get these things done as well. You can script some of these things out, um, but uh, th they are built in a, one of two ways, uh, declarative or imperative styles. Um, whatever language, whatever way they'd like you to do this stuff is, uh, is, is written in either one of these. And I agree with you, Jackie. First off, what's up, Jackie? How are you doing today? Uh, it's good to have you here. Good to see your name. I always love when my friends come through. I do appreciate it. Um, but declarative. So what is declarative? Declarative programming is a programming paradigm. So it's, it's a, it's a way of doing things. It's a, it's a structure that expresses the logic of a computation without describing its control flow. So declarative says, hey, I ain't gonna tell you how to get here, but this is what I want. I want this and you are supposed to understand how to get me there. If you need to do these five things to get me to what I put on this piece of paper, uh, then you go ahead and do those five things, but I'm not gonna tell you the order of operations. Uh, I'm gonna expect that you know how to do that, okay? And this is, uh, you know, the, the overarching paradigm for, um, for a lot of the uh, provisioning tools uh, and and kind of the configuration management tools as well. Um, there are some different ones as well. And then imperative kind of goes the other way. It's, it says, hey, this is a programming paradigm that uses statements that change the program state. So this is a little bit more, uh, I need to, you, basically you're gonna do what I say, um, the way that I say it. So if you want uh, some stuff to work differently, then you've got to adjust these things and be pretty explicit about what you want to happen. So 
one you kind of just you're expected to you to, to give it the way you want it to be but you don't tell it how to get there and the other one you are telling it exactly how to get to the state that it needs it'll change as you give it each command all right good to know not crazy important that you memorize but it's good to know the difference between these we will see examples of the differences between these all right um so now here's where we're gonna dig into the pillars and little mortal is uh, number three so this is number two we're talking about provisioning right now we will answer your question when we get to the second part which is configuration management so we got like two slides i think on infrastructure provisioning and then we'll talk about the question that you had i didn't forget so what in the world is infrastructure provisioning infrastructure provisioning is the process of creating and making operational and so this was very interesting the first time i read this um uh, it is not um it uh operational it the, the verb is making operational the whole making operational is the whole verb and it's not uh it's, it, operational is not a descriptor here it is a uh, creating and to make operational computing resources such as virtual machines uh, RAM and disk storage. So this is, again, you can do this mostly because of the cloud. There are some paradigms which, in which you can actually make this happen, uh, not in the cloud. You know, you can do these things with virtual machines, you know, using your hypervisors in your data center. But right now we're really talking about the cloud tonight um, and what this stuff is usually talking about. But um, what's up, Mr. Sinister, uh, Mr. Syntax, sorry. Welcome, good evening, hope you're, uh, hope you're doing good. And absolutely, we're always gonna be at it. But this is the creation of those networks, of those storage devices, of of the virtual machines, um, and like you're setting up all these things uh, with infrastructure provisioning. So the I like to use, uh, you know, I like to use um, not acronyms. Uh, I like to use. Um, uh similes and metaphors uh no analogies that's what i was looking for you know i had to go through a lot of words to get there but i made it there okay analogies is what i meant and so this uh is generally in reference uh to you know to cloud stuff um and to automate these processes but this actually i think i put it here okay never mind i was about to give it to you too early i jumped the gun let's go ahead and not jump the gun and uh we won't get disqualified so this is generally a reference to cloud resources uh using infrastructure as code it is possible to automate these processes using programming or configuration languages or templates okay so we can virtualize these things what do you get when you cross a rabbit with a water hose i'm not gonna look at the answer yet now nah, I looked at the answer. I'm sorry. Hairspray. That's good. That's good. Uh, has, been, <laughs> has been proudly served ice cold. I'm saving that. I'm saving that for the day. Whenever, you know, the day that I become a father, I'm going to absolutely save all these jokes. The, that jokes I find to be the best, uh, mostly to tell around your kids when they're about uh, 13 or 14 and they're starting to want to become cool and their friends are in the car with them. That's when you drop all the dad jokes and you laugh really hard at every single one that you do. You know, I'm not, you know, I, that is my dream. I can't wait to get there. It'll be very exciting. I like it. I'm definitely putting that one in my back pocket. That's a good one. Um, all right. So infrastructure as code, what is it responsible for? Or infrastructure provisioning? What is provisioning responsible for? And again, it's for building the networks, the storage, the compute, whatever it is for your environment. The, the analogy here is that this builds uh, the foundation um, of the house and the house itself. So this is, uh, you know, it's building what everything's going to run on. So, you know, a house is useful, um, even if you're not living in it yet, but it's, it builds the foundation, you know, it, it does all the digging, it builds the foundation and it actually builds, you know, it builds the frame of the house, it puts on the siding, all that stuff, uh, but it builds the house itself. Nothing's inside that house, but it does build the house, okay? And these are some of the popular uh, provisioning tools and uh, so Terraform is by a, a good margin, the largest and probably most popular. Actually, everyone, I don't know. I didn't actually get to see any of it today because I was pretty busy, but HashiConf is going on right now. Uh, today and tomorrow, I believe Hashi, HashiCorp is the company that makes Terraform. They make a lot of infrastructure tools, really cool uh, company to check out. I highly recommend people check them out. Um, but yeah, you, if the, the, com the, the conference is completely free. I would check it out uh, if you want to check these things up, out. 
um palumi is one as well palumi looks pretty dope so they have a completely different uh way of doing things hashicorp uses uh it doesn't use a programming language it uses something called hcl it's hashicorp configuration language that's what you have to write to be able to provision infrastructure palumi on the other hand uses the languages that uh developers know uh uses python i think you can do it in javascript as well uh maybe typescript as well um but yeah um AWS CloudFormation. So this is strictly for AWS. Terraform allows you to work with many other many service providers. Palumi does as well. AWS CloudFormation is only for AWS. Um, this is written in YAML. Um, you know, kind of hard to read. Uh, it does work, um, but again, it's AWS only. Um, so I would only take a look at that if you were sure you want to dig into that. Uh, but also AWS now has the CDK, which is the cloud development kit, which is uh, a little more similar to Pulumi from everything that I can see. Uh, and then Vagrant. So Vagrant is not a cloud provisioning tool, but it is a an infrastructure provisioner. Um, and this is specifically for virtual machines, uh, but it does provision uh, that hardware that we're talking about. I put this on here because again, like I said, we're mostly talking about cloud stuff when, when we're talking about these things, but there are tools that allow for, uh, for uh, non-cloud applications. Yeah, Solstack, uh, so Solstack goes into, Solstack and Ansible go into the configuration management stuff, yes, uh, everyone who's used salt stack, everyone who used puppet chef, they all have a uh, provisioners. They all have uh, plugins or pieces that will allow you to provision infrastructure. They were not designed for that. And they are missing a lot of features. They will do a lot of the basic stuff for you. They'll do a lot of, they'll do a lot of it for you, but they are missing uh, a lot. They were not designed to do these things at first. Yes, they're building new features in uh, for sure, but they are not provisioners. Those are configuration managers for sure. Why will we use CloudFormation over Ansible if it's only for AWS uh, CloudFormation over Terraform? Um, so the reason why you would why you would might want to use CloudFormation over um, over Terraform uh, has to do with um, okay, a couple of, a couple different things. One, if you are building something new and Amazon has released a new service, um, because generally, and this is not a, this is not always a true statement, but generally, CloudFormation is going to get support for their new services first. Um, so, if you're someone who cares about that, that might be why you use CloudFormation uh, for one. Two, um, uh, that if you do go with CloudFormation, now you don't have to deal with any outside tools. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're completely in the AWS stable. Uh, you don't have to worry about dealing with any kind of outside tools and extra pieces to be able to manage and run your infrastructure. Also, there's some, uh, there's, you know, pretty specific use cases. There's some intricacies with the way that the templating works on both of them, where uh, Terraform actually makes it tough to do a few things. Uh, specifically around networking. Um, but for the most part, they both will do both stuff. I would highly recommend. Uh, yes, I would say, I personally would say that it's not worth learning cloud formation. I really would say it's not worth it. Um, if you get, if, definitely learn Terraform before cloud formation. All right. Brussels Bronx, because vendor lock-in is real. Uh, yeah, vendor lock-in is 100% real, 200% real. Um, I guess all stack. I haven't really touched all stack that much, but again, salt stack, um, I'm pretty salt stack definitely falls into the configuration management stuff, which we are about to give, uh, to get in right now. So our provisioners, they're going to provision that underlying infrastructure. They're going to lay the foundation for our applications to run on. They're going to build the house for our applications to live in. All right. But configuration management tools are going to fill that, uh, that house in. So what in the world is configuration management? It is the process of maintaining computer systems, server and software in a desired and consistent state. Go ahead and feast your eyes on those last words, desired, consistent state. So the provisioners provision the infrastructure and then uh, the configuration management tools uh, come along and they configure all of the things that are on the running infrastructure that was provisioned uh, and get it into a desired and consistent state. Very important here. Uh, so if the first part is like building the foundation, building the house, configuration management is like furnishing that house. <clears throat> that house that you built via provisioning, um, configuration management is furnishing it, you know, getting the couches set up properly, putting the blinds up, things like that. Um, and it's also 
are going to straighten things up for you as they get messed up as you're living in the house and you're moving around uh messing things up configuration management will will you know hey you know you we're supposed to put that cup on the leave it on the um or on the you know the counter put that thing you know back in the cupboard or something like that it's gonna it's gonna keep that stuff together for you manage chaos what's up man how you doing good to see you i'm you know all my i feel like all of all of my friends came through tonight i appreciate it. it's good to see everybody's name so we recommend to use terraform and cloud formation for setting up servers and use ansible for etc for orchestration yeah um again a very nuanced question but um essentially yeah um i would like and that's how we're gonna do it we don't need to do it this way but for what we're about to do is basically we're gonna utilize terraform for getting our underlying infrastructure and then we're gonna use ansible to configure that infrastructure there are again i feel strongly about different um design patterns for this um, i personally don't use if i can avoid it i won't use a configuration management tool uh like one of these that we're about to talk about um personally but we'll talk about why after we learn about configuration management so what is this responsible for again it's responsible for the management of the tools um, and ensuring that users and software settings and processes are operating as intended and if they are not they will respond accordingly dr buckwild how are you doing today what is up i'm telling you everyone's coming through so this is so exciting um so yeah it, you know it's for setting all those things up rather than provisioning the real infrastructure and these are some of the tools here um there are a few more there's like a python one called fabric there's a bunch of other ones um but these are the main big players in the game the biggest player at this time i believe is ansible um and ansible is probably the only one that i would recommend to learn right now not because i think it's the best at all but it's the, it's the one that um i feel that people are take like when people are using these tools uh picking up these tools to use uh, it feels like ansible is the one that everyone is picking picking up <laughs> terraform and ansible i call it the terrible stack i like that i like that i like it a lot um Ansible is amazing for uh, pre-strap and post-strap. Yeah, I mean, yes. I I I I don't even think in the. I don't even. I don't think. You, I mean, for most use cases uh, nowadays, I don't think you need it. What's up, J Doggy Dog? Thank you so much for the follow. What's up, Awana? Welcome, Solar Truth. Good to have you, Milan Harris. Dev, welcome as well. Arisha, welcome to the channel. It's good to have you all here. Red Hat owns Ansible now, so it's more exposed. Yeah, Red Ansible does own it. Ansible Fest, 13 to 14. So we got, that's great. So if Ansible Fest is the 13th and 14th, and the HashiCorp Conf is the 12th and 13th, then exactly, exactly what we just called it, the Terrible Stack. Uh, this is the Terrible Stack Conf. Uh, one back to back, I get it, I like it. Uh, that's basically what it is. Um, So, Yes, these are tools. Chef, uh, Chef is a configuration management tool um, that is written in Ruby and it uses uh, its own, it does have all these, I think, use their own domain specific language. So they use, um, uh, you know, they don't use a specific programming language for you to implement it. Uh, they, they set up their own language that only works with their tool. Um, and so it uses its own domain specific language, but you can also use kind of default Ruby. Um, Ansible, is, I mean, uh, Chef is generally looked at as the configuration management tool for developers. Um, and, or at least it was, I don't know if that's still the case, but it, it was because again, it provided uh, some of that raw nature of the, of, of being able to use the Ruby as you wanted to. And a lot of infrastructure things, a lot of infrastructure tooling and stuff was built uh, in Ruby, it used to be managed in Ruby. Um, it has since switched to Go for the most part, um, but still tons written in Ruby as well. Uh, Puppet, Puppet, I think is written in Python. I'm not sure actually, uh, but Puppet was the first CM tool that I learned to use. Uh, again, also has its own domain specific language uh okay ruby yeah okay i didn't know that um i maybe i didn't know that maybe i didn't know it was written in ruby um but puppet's cool too um i like puppet um migrate this over okay interesting uh puppet another tool uh again you got to learn like you can't you can take if you if you learn the concepts 
of configuration management. Yeah, you can move back and forth between them, but again, different domain specific languages. So Puppet does things differently than Chef. Um, uh, both of them use agents, I believe. Uh, agents are basically where the server, uh, the, each server that's managed has to get a piece of software installed on it to be able to work. Um, I don't know, I don't. I really don't know that much about SaltStack. It seems like we have a lot of people here who like SaltStack. I don't know that much about it. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about it that much. I think SaltStack's Python. Am I right about that though? I might be right about SaltStack being Python. Um, but Ansible, um, Ansible, I think it's Python as well. Uh, Ansible, again, owned by Red Hat now. Um, and Ansible, you know, again, all these have their own specific language, um, but it's, it's, Ansible is kind of the one that the, all the infrastructure uh, and sysadmin, all the infrastructure people who didn't consider themselves dev, devs kind of went the Ansible route at the time and Puppet. Like it was like, it was like if you were dev focused, you'd go Chef or, and then Puppet at the time. And then as Ansible got purchased and started to get super popular, um, that's kind of just where everyone goes now if you need a CM tool. Um, well, a lot of people, I'm not gonna say everyone, but a lot of people do go there. So, um, I think you asked what the difference was before, um, little mortal about, wait, let me see if I can find the question. I had it. People say Ansible replaces chef. Uh, yes, Ansible can replace chef. Uh, it, they serve generally the same purpose. Um, they serve the same purpose. They are configuration management tools. Um, and chef is still used for sure. Um, but just, you know, not. I don't see a lot of people adopting like just like, oh, cool. It's 2020. We're going to implement, you know, puppet now into our stack. I don't really see that all that much. Uh, one thing that helps out with chef as well is that um, chef is used. Uh, Amazon has adopted it into its OpsWorks platform. And so a surprising amount of people use it inside of that. I didn't realize I saw some numbers on it. I was floored i did not know how many people like aws pushes ops works a lot i didn't realize how many people use it um uh, because i never hear anyone talking about it but you know i was a little bit surprised about that i used the mini psa scripts i mean yeah yep you know you gotta do what you gotta do you know you gotta do what you gotta do to make it work and it is all systems manager now it 100 should be all systems manager now but so we talked about the, the infrastructure provisioner. So the thing that spins up the infrastructure, and then we talked about the configuration management tools, which come along and, uh, and, and configure that, like, you know, what's already spun up those resources, it gets everything installed, it gets everything running, it gets everything set up, and then it makes sure it stays that way. Um, and so again, Ansible, I think is the only one here that's agentless. Um, I don't know anything about Saltstack, so please, I have no idea. Um, but Ansible, the other, like Chef and Puppet, you gotta install something on each of the nodes that you're gonna be um, uh, doing work on, uh, that you're gonna be managing. Ansible does not do that, it SSHs in, it does not need an agent, and it handles these things for you. And I think that is something that people like about it a lot. Um, something that I like about it as well. Okay, the last one, number four is scripts. Scripts is the last configuration management item. Why in the world is scripts on here? I've heard so many people be like, that's not configuration management. Well, 2000% it is. It absolutely is uh, infrastructure as code. It's absolutely configuration management. You can even make scripts your infrastructure provisioners if you wanted to. Uh, the only problem is, uh, well, let's talk about this really quick. Um, what are scripts? Scripts or a scripting language is a programming language for a special runtime environment that automates the execution of tasks. So it's around for you to execute, uh, to automate the execution of tasks. The tasks could alternatively be executed one by one by a human operator. All right, scripting languages are often interpreted rather than compiled. Uh, interpreted meaning that the computer uh, reads in the code line by line and says, all right, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna figure out what to do with it. Um, it does, you know, it doesn't pre-compile everything into some type of executable. Um, and so again, generally these scripts are going to be things that you could alternatively do, um, by hand one by one, if you wanted to, but it helps with those things. Um, these are some of the common tools to write, to do scripting in. So bash is, you know, really important. 
um, Ruby as well. Um, Ruby is a good scripting language. Uh, Bash, again, because this is the interpreter that reads all of your Linux commands, knows what to do with all your Linux commands. Ruby is a, is a great tool for this as well. Python, an even better tool, in my opinion, than Ruby. And Node.js, I, I, this is, um, at, like, people have been using Node heavily. Node.js is a, um, it's a, it's a JavaScript runtime that, you know, can run on a machine, run on a server. Uh, and so Node.js is used for this as well. Lots of scripting tools for this. Um, also, scripts don't need to be used independently. Uh, scripts can actually be used in conjunction with these other tools. Scripts can be run directly in these other tools, uh, but they are another tool for you to be able to get, uh, to be able to codify your infrastructure and get it into a state that you want. Um, you know, scripts are very important. We're gonna write a couple of scripts. We're gonna write some scripts here. Um, we could, um, maybe we won't, maybe we won't. So, well, no, we will. Um, we'll write some scripts, but we'll end up probably turning them into containers to do things like, um, we need to be able to move our data. We need to be able to dump our node, I mean, our MongoDB databases. Um, so, um, we can write little scripts to allow us to easily kick off tasks like that and stuff. So, um, so yeah, Mr. Salsa, we are actually not doing that tonight. We are learning about infrastructure as code and we are going to codify, um, we're gonna spend the next two weeks codifying some infrastructure that we already have set up. Ansible works uh, well with AWX. Yeah, I mean, I like, I like, I do like Ansible. Um, I just, like I said, if I can, if, if I can avoid, I, in my mind, if, if I'm going to be building an application, uh, if I, from scratch, or if I'm at the beginning, when we can decide what to do, uh, I'm either going to build it serverless, uh, or I'm going to containerize it or is it going to need to be able to, I'm going to be, need to be able to set everything up on a golden image or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I, I generally avoid having to do any type of configuration management. So another thing that, uh, that happens that we didn't talk about with configuration management is again, yeah. So basically here's how kind of a, just a theoretical workflow would go. You would have a provisioner, say Terraform. And in that provisioner, you would say, cool, I need in AWS, I need, a, I need an EC2 instance set up. I needed to have uh, a, you know, an IP address that is this, that's exposed. I need to uh, have this much storage, okay? And you would use Terraform to go ahead and provision that and, and you'd run it. AWS will say, hey, I see what you want. I'm reading these machine readable definition files. You're passing these things to me. And I, you know, I can see, you know, you're speaking my language. I see that you want a server, you want it to be this size, you want it to have these settings, you want it to have this IP address, cool, I will set that up for you, and it does. Test that up for you, great. Then, a configuration management tool like Chef, or Ansible, or Puppet, or Sawstack will come along and say, cool, this server is now set up, I have some conf configuration here that says you are supposed to have Nginx set up and it is supposed to be turned on and running. And you also have, uh, maybe maybe we are installing WordPress. So you also have, uh, so maybe not Nginx, maybe we have Apache and we have PHP. And you also have MySQL on here and you have these configuration files and we have these users. We've got the WW data user. We got all these users set up, everyone who needs to get in there. And we have all these settings and all these things are supposed to be here. So I'm going to check to make sure they're there. And it's going to check in and say, Hey, I don't see any of these things. I'm going to install them all and all the applications that I want running. I'm going to make sure that they're running. And then every half an hour or so, I'm going to check back in with you and I'm going to say, Hey, I said that you're supposed to have Apache installed and running. Is it installed? Yes. Is it running? It better be running because if it's not, I'm going to start it back up. And so again, this is what allows you to prevent that configuration drift. If things start to drift, if applications get turned off for some reason, if files get moved, um, configuration management will come back in and set it all back up for you. Okay. It, it actually is really nice. It really did blow my mind. The first time I saw puppet, uh, run, uh, I, before I got puppet running for the first time, it really did. It blew my mind. I was like, I needed this years ago. Um, pretty cool. But I think we've moved a little bit. Um, not in all cases, uh, these are still definitely needed skills. There are plenty of architectures and infrastructures where this stuff has to happen, where it, where it absolutely has to happen. So again, in those situations, I will use it. But if I'm starting something new, I doubt I'm ever gonna use these in a new project to be honest with you. <laughs> because uh, that CKA, I mean that KCA, 
that immutable infrastructure immutable meaning that um you don't make changes to it once it's there you don't make changes to it and if you want to make a change if you need to you know make the hard drive bigger or something you don't change that thing that exists you destroy it and you create brand new stuff i'm a big fan of immutable infrastructure um it is uh it's pretty great for me so terraform high level like setting up instances load balancers databases absolutely ansible inside the instance like downloading no java nginx you got it little mortal that's perfect now again it is a venn diagram all right i do want to be clear yes ansible these configuration management tools like ansible they do now have um some capacity to provision infrastructure they can do those things and tools like ansible i mean tools like uh terraform and things can also do a little bit of the server management they can actually set a couple things up on the server as well so there's a little bit of overlap because these tools have been developed you know being developed for a long time but for the most part, we're talking about what their uh, intended purpose is, and that is generally how you would use them. Yep, and Terraform is absolutely damn fast to provision. Yes, operator, thank you so much for the follow. Little Mortal, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, now, Cream, now, Cram, welcome. Lexicon Dissect, thank you so much. Okay, so let's, um, that's all, that's, that's all of the things about infrastructure as code any questions about that before we start to uh break down the things that we currently have and start to get started on what we're going to be doing tama hills welcome to the channel thank you for the follow all right Ooh, what, oh yes i perfect perfect i wasn't sure that i had my ipad let's make sure it has a charge Ooh, 46%, perfect, we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and let's grab this. Let's plug it in so that we can get a little bit of, uh, get a little bit of, uh, of what, what's it called? Uh, our, our whiteboard going. You know, we gotta whiteboard out some stuff really quick. You know, hey, I, I do, I live pretty dangerously here. So another way to use Ansible is to call a webhook on AWX at the end of the Jenkins task to publish. Ansible is not limited to 30 minute loop to restore. Yep. Uh, no, no, you're you're not wrong. You are, you're not wrong. Definitely not. Uh, so let's see what I was about to do. I was about to first show you all what we have. So again, we're running up, we're running up, we're working at a company a fictitious company called pipelines and they have this application called conduit and you can get to it right now by going to pipelines.media and there are some amazing articles on here i mean some of them are fictitious like this one that says uh waffles are better than pancakes because 11 said so uh, uh 11 likes you know she you know she's not allowed to cook on the stove but she's allowed to use a toaster even though she was eating these raw um you know and not raw because they're already cooked but so you know um th th this is the site uh but we also not only do we have pipelines.media we do have uh some development environments we do have staging.pipelines.media and you can sign up for an account on here if you'd like you can actually create posts um so this is staging the other one is production and we do also have development and I, they're all up that's good i was surprised oh yeah so this says it's production. This is true. If you do log into development, it's pointed at production right now. Why is it pointed at production? It's just something we were working on at the end to test some changes. So that is why we have this managed chaos. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you for the continued support. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Everyone who received a gifted sub, please thank your gifter. Uh, the love is real, man. I do appreciate it. Hope, hope, hope all is well. I really do hope all is well, man. Since we, uh, we're not gonna get to, to meet up this year, you know, it kind of sucks. Um, but hopefully 2021 will be the year. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, we'll see. We'll definitely see. All right, so yes, so you know, just kind of stick to production if you want to stick to if you want to create any posts or anything like that. Um, yeah, so we have this. What this application is uh, right now? It's a it's in a poly repository setup, a poly repo setup. Uh, it is um, a Node.js. The front end that you're seeing right here is a Node.js and React front end. Um, the back end is actually a Node.js Express API. 
and then there's also uh nginx as a proxy and there's also mongodb so four services uh we, we actually containerized them they weren't containerized we containerized all the services um and they're running we did uh, actually the only thing we did not containerize was mongo um but we can get that containerized pretty easily because it's already probably in a container that's easy for us to use and not probably it is uh and so what we're gonna do is also and right now they are right now they are on you know in-house servers uh they're on aws right now there are ec2 instances they're installed natively um there so we are gonna you know we're not gonna go from the we're trying to work through uh, what you would do if you started out like, you know, on an old legacy system and work your way up uh, You wouldn't generally you wouldn't go from zero to hero uh, So there's some cool things like we could hop straight into uh, something like ECS or AKS um, uh, You know if we wanted to but that's not really the goal of what we're learning We're trying to learn how to use these tools understand what they do. So I think in this case uh, We are going to take it um, You know take it easy and not take it easy, but uh we're gonna do it uh, a little bit more traditionally, but still using these amazing tools. And let's draw out the way that my mind sees this happening. So let's get over to, where's the, uh, let me get my Apple Pencil here. Are you gonna get an SSL certificate for pipelines to deploy it with Nginx? That is a great question. Now, maybe. Um, so, if we do, we will 100% be using, we do own the domain, we do manage the DNS, all that's great. It would make sense for us to do that. I think that if we have time, I think that would be a great thing to do. If we're gonna do it, we're, we're definitely gonna do it next week. Um, that's a good idea. Um, Amazon provides for some, that's, a, that's actually a really good idea. I like that. Um, but I do like that and I like that because we've never, I don't think I've ever showed you all how to install SSL certificates on here. That's a great idea. And and uh, setting up Let's Encrypt, uh, there's some automation we can do around uh, a Let's Encrypt containers and things like that to be able to uh, make the process even easier. Uh, so that's pretty dope. What is up, Unique ID 001? Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, I am ecstatic to have you as a part of this fine, fine community. I appreciate that. I, you know, cooking up some dinner, eating. I hope it's something good. Uh, I'm not cooking tonight. I cooked last night. Well, me and my wife. My wife did most of the cooking because I'm a terrible cook. We made a little bit of, uh, you know, nice. Um, uh, uh, what are those things? Stuffed peppers, stuffed bell peppers. Uh, so that was nice and beautiful today. And today we have some, uh, I, I cooked up some uh, air fried Brussels sprouts. Um, so, you know, a little bit of a healthy, you know, things to get me on the way to looking like the rock. So I'm glad you're getting a little dinner over there. Uh, I'm hungry. SL certificate from AWS certificate manager. Um, now nah, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna go let's encrypt. Um, certificate manager does make things easy. We could just stick this thing like, behind uh, CloudFront or something and just add it, but I think it'll be pretty fun. And yes, we could document that for sure. If I was using Terraform, I would use ACM indeed. Yeah, 100%. Oh my, are you, are, always. Well, I'm on, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a diet of not eating all of the Krispy Kreme donuts that exist. Uh, so that's the diet I'm on right now. You know, trying to do my best, eat more greens, you know, take it slow and make things pretty good. Yeah, you do gotta have an AOB if you use ACM or um, an AOB or again, CloudFront works as well. But yeah, hey, you know, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with, I'm cool with Rock Pod. So let's go. Wait, nine zero, let's go to the whiteboard. I never remember which page it's on. And let's get over to, is it still set up? All right, so actually this drawing right here was when we were doing linked lists. So if you're new to the channel, uh, this is Mondays and Wednesdays, but on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we run a class called Decoded and we're on the second level of Decoded, uh, which is a journey into software engineering and computer science. So we were learning some um, data structures and we're gonna be taking, we're learning some more data structures um, tomorrow. Um, we're gonna be learning how to do searching, searching algorithms. Um, so we'll learn about a few different, uh, we'll be able to solve a few problems, but we'll learn about those data structures as well, if you are interested in that. Uh, what app setup are you using for your whiteboard? So I'm using, um, I'm using some app literally called whiteboard. Um, 
it's right here and it's it's i don't know it's literally called whiteboard and again i'm using uh my ipad is connected to a, i have a capture card in this computer um i have a like an elgato capture card that is using this i have two of them actually so my computer my laptop is going into one and this is going to the other um don't really need it i just i don't know what i was thinking i was going to do but now that i bought them i feel like i have to use them that's why we do that Dwayne Johnson is my guy, absolutely. Love how he reps the island culture. Yeah, it's pretty dope. I mean, he's a he's he's definitely. I've done myself the pebble. I love it. I definitely love it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to become the real Dwayne Johnson. Okay, he's the fake one. Uh, well, when I become the real Dwayne Johnson, he will be the fake one. He's still the real one for now until I take over that title. Okay, so here is what we have. We have some microservices. We have um, this is green. So let me um. Let's go with this one. We have an Nginx. It has to be all cap because Nginx is all cap. And we'll put in a little circle like this. And so this is you sitting at your computer and you're very happy, okay? You're very excited and all you wanna do, nothing more would make you happier than to just publish an article on pipelines.media. You're really trying to hit that conduit app and uh, set something off. So what you do, the thing that you do, why am I in highlighter mode? Okay, what you do now is you say, cool, I'm gonna make a request for my little lappy toppy right here that's floating in midair. And you're gonna say, hey, I wanna, you know, I'm gonna hit that site and you're gonna hit, uh, you know, DNS is gonna send you over here and it's gonna go into Nginx. Nginx is gonna take that request and say, all right, cool, I got it. I know what's going on here. Uh, I only know one thing to do. I'm gonna proxy you through. Uh, you're, you're contacting me on point 80, but, my application back here is actually gonna be running over port 4100. So I'm gonna proxy to a service and that service is gonna be our front end. And our front end is uh, is actually, uh, was it node JS and React? I think that's what it is. And this is a different service, all right? And so it goes over there to get the data uh, and actually serves everything back. It's very interesting because the back end actually, um, it, it, may, it may actually feel like this is what happens, but this is not what happens. Um, this is the back end right here. This is the third service. The back end's here, and this is Node.js and Express. All right, so this is over here, and this is getting data from Mongo. It's pretty interesting how I was gonna change the colors, but then I realized that Nginx is green, Node.js is green, Mongo is green. They are all green tools. But yes, yeah, so this is, well, so, okay, not, uh, well, the Node.js does, yes, it has a, it's running as a Node application. So yeah, that's what it is. You know, I know it sounds weird, you know, because on the front end, Node.js is supposed to be server side, React, but yeah, that's exactly what it is. Now, the way that mentally the data flows, it looks like it, the data mentally looks like it flows like this. But this isn't really how it goes. When you make a request, React, well, yeah, React is blue. Uh, for Facebook, for anyone who didn't know, Facebook is the creators and the maintainers of React. It is, in fact, blue. And you know what? I like that. I like that. We are going to turn on, we, you know, we got to be, we got to be, uh, we have to be true over here. Okay. We got to speak truths and everyone has to, you know, we got to be perfect, you know? Even though we are writing like four year olds. Uh, we are we are doing this. Is there a reason we uh, we chose port 4100 or just a random port? Uh, so this is because the application runs on 4100 by default, uh, but the service would run on 3000 by default. So Node.js runs on port 3000 by default. This one runs on 4100 because that's how I set up. I did not create this application. Um, no, uh, really the only reason is we, so it's, uh, it's a little unconventional to start um, uh, the just to, to start this on port 80, but we could have we could have started over port 80. There's no real reason besides the fact that we wanted to add in an extra service, which is Nginx for some of this. So, yep. Um, so React is that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what color Express might be. What's up, HV Manny? What's up, Plix? Welcome to the channel. It's good to have you both, as well as Amska. 
good to have you thank you so much for the follow now this is what it looks like is happening this is not quite what's happening and this is mostly due to the way that uh this node react front end works and this is how a lot of things work what's actually happening is this there's no connection here the front end actually does not contact the back end your computer gets this request your computer gets the whole request from the front end and it travels back down to your computer right now the front end is configured to speak to the back end. It is configured to speak to the back end, or at least it has a connection string to the back end. But it does not correct directly to the back end. Uh, this request comes back and it says, "Hey, for me to to render this page, you need to go get some data from this place that I have configured." And so your your computer will actually make the second request out to the back end, which will then get data from Mongo and then send that back. So you're actually getting data from two different spaces, but that's not super important. This is just uh, this is just the point where I'm giving you a little bit of extra about the way that some of these applications work. Um, it's that you know the front end and the back end here don't actually speak to each other. Your computer, the client here, um, is actually making the request to both of them, and it knows to make the request to the back end because the front end is configured uh, to tell your to tell the client to make that request. All right. So realistically though, that's not crazy important, just something I really wanted to include. Um, Cause a lot of times it's hard to troubleshoot things if you don't know some of the problems that are happening. It's also the reason why this application will not work. If you get this running locally, this will not work. If you set the connection string to the back end for here to localhost, it will not work. It will not work. It'll only work if you're doing a, a local connection. It will not work because uh, from your computer because your client will try to make a request to localhost instead of the actual backend. All right. So, cool. Front end is cache data? No, the front end is not cache data. The front end is the uh, is our, our, is using uh, these components, these different pieces of the site to render what you see. So the front end is going to render out what you see, and the back end is just going to fill it in, fill in what you see with the data. Um, so we'll, so the, the front end has the CSS, it has the structure of the page and all that stuff, uh, and the, and then the back end just has the data that's going to fill in uh, that information. You do need both of them. Would it be any better to root through Nginx to the back end? Yeah, we could do that too. Um, and that's also essentially what happens as well. Um, actually, no, it's not. We, I mean, yes, we should do that. We should do that as well. And then so that back end request will eventually do this and then back. Uh, yeah, yes, we can configure it to do that. I don't know why we're not doing that. Um, sure, that's probably that's the better paradigm uh, because then uh, it's a better paradigm almost exclusively for security reasons, because right now, uh, this server, uh, actually has port, um, it actually has port 3000 open when it probably should not have port 3000 open. So we'll go ahead and we will set that up. So that's, you know, that's good too. Absolutely. Um, let's see. So how the front end and back end will communicate with each other. They, like I said, they don't, um, uh, all, like they don't that so the front end sends the connection information to the client and then the client actually connects to the back end so they are the front end and the back end of the same application but the front end does not speak to the back end for specifically this application i wonder why you chose to expose the back end data service instead of making it a front end call to the back end um it's not security risk um so this is uh, two two reasons. I didn't choose this for one. This is a this is a this is an example application that exists out in the wild. For one, uh, two, um, it's not configured that way because this is generally how React works. Um, yes, um, this is this is how React works. This is how uh, the paradigm of React works. Uh, it, it, it basically pushes. Uh, the the processing of things from the server uh, out to the client. So that is why most of the applications, a lot of applications that you use today do this. Um, a lot of them do this. Uh, they grab, they end up grabbing data from a lot of different places like this. Uh, it is not a security risk. It is a security risk in that ex that it might be in that I exposed it on port 3000, but that's not super important. Even if we set this up properly, again, the, the proper setup would be to uh, basically just make the backend request also go through nginx and get proxied so 
3000. And then now anything that goes to the back end would come like this instead. Uh, but these two would never talk to each other. But yeah, your browser does all the cool stuff. So this is what's set up. And um, what we want to do is talk about the things that are needed to turn this to codify the infrastructure that uh, that is under this. So what is the infrastructure that is under this? Well, the infrastructure that's under this is a giant EC2 instance or just not EC2, but just, uh, you know, a server. And this server is an Ubuntu server, okay? And so not not an EC2 instance. Imagine it is, you know, in an old it's in an old data center somewhere else. And this is the main piece of infrastructure that exists for this thing right now. Uh, and then put server times three. Why times three? Server times three because we have a development server, a production server, and um, a staging server. Okay, so we have three different servers that are here, costing us the big bucks. Um, and now what do these things have? What's up, uh, Gifty? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the follow. What's good, Claytrick? Welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follow as well. Um, so I realize that we paying for servers. We got millions of client PCs who can do the work. That is true. Um, that the real, the real, uh, Polygon or Pygon, um, that is true, you know, if you can put some of that processing out to the client or a lot of it, uh, it can save you money for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's see, can't you just serve the front end via Nginx, skip node process running for the front end? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Serve the front end via Nginx, so it is, and skip the node process, no, um, no. And, did it die again? Hold on, hold on. Did, did I did I lose it again? Okay, I'm I'm back. If I did, um, you can't because um because Node is it's not a statically generated website. Uh, the Node process needs to be running to serve that React code. At least the way that it's set up now. I'm a little lost. If the back end and front end don't talk, how does the back end cater the request from the user? Uh, yeah, I, I, again, it, it go, let me go back up to the other screen. I don't know, actually don't know how to go back up to the other screen, but let's see. Can I, how do I, um, I see a plus here, but how do I minus? No, 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 don't remove current. I see plus, I see, I don't know how to go back. Um. Mm, template management. I don't, I have no idea how to go. This is, all right, this is not, this is not a uh, good, wait, maybe I have to, nope, don't, I have no idea, what, I have no idea how to get back. Um, But essentially, again, your, 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 your browser makes the request to the back end. Uh, the front end tells your browser says, Hey, you know, you need some more data to render this page. Go ahead and make a request to this other URL that we have. And that is how it will do it. The arrow thing on the top left, um, will just, uh, it'll just backspace everything. Um, I see a plus, I see a minus, I see some dot, dot, dots that show me some older things. I can't swipe. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. I got it. Ah, that's weird. Okay, how about this? That better? That feels better. But yes, um, it, this will make the request to the back end. Your computer will. All right, really odd. This is really confusing. Okay. All right, so we have this. We have all those services set up in here. So again, Nginx, um, uh, front end, back end. Mongo. We have all of these things set up in a server. Now, uh, we also have, um, we also have DNS out here. This is part of the infrastructure and DNS is set up and DNS says, Hey, point here. Um, we also have some, some network stuff set up. Um, so we got some underlying networks here as well but there's a bunch of underlying stuff that serves the current infrastructure and you or us, all of us can codify all of these things today. And that is what we are about to start on the process of doing. And what are we gonna do to do this? 
uh we're gonna we're, we're gonna start with terraform um so we're gonna do it in a couple different we're gonna do here's what my plan is and again we can let this uh evolve as we kind of get farther along but um first uh we're gonna use terraform to again codify three different environments okay three different uh, a way for it to spin up three different environments three different three separate vpcs uh, so virtual private clouds this is going to be the networking. Actually, maybe we don't even need to do VPCs. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out in a second, but we're going to use it to spit up new EC2 instances um, that are ready for us that have the proper things, the space that we need on it. Um, and to also, again, configure uh, any networking that we need to configure as well as the DNS. So uh, it'll be relatively simple for us to set up the infrastructure piece of this then um we're probably going to use ansible to uh manage these servers we're probably going to set it up in a way where ansible says cool um i see that you have the server here and we are going to be running these microservices and we they're, they're all containerized so ansible is going to go ahead and install docker for us make sure Docker is installed and configured properly and get these containers running for us. Now, I want to be clear. We said this in the very beginning. So this, we said this in the very beginning of, of this is that this, this course right now is not designed to teach you how to make the best decision architecturally. It's that's not, that's not what we're here for. Um, we're here to learn how to use these tools. We're here to understand, you know, how, like, how to use them to do what we need to to do um so would this be the right thing to do N i don't think it's the right thing to do but it is an okay thing to do I, I don't think it's wrong at all um but again i don't think it's the perfect thing to do in this situation but again what are we gonna do we're gonna use terraform to configure the underlying infrastructure which should be pretty simple uh that our code is gonna run on our different environments uh you know a couple of different environments and then we are going to use ansible to uh configure those things and to keep them up to date uh then what we will actually end up doing is adding uh, a few scripts and services and stuff to be able to build out again some supporting tools and features uh as well as some other services that are going to go along with this is DNS the one that converts your instance IP address into a string? Um, yeah, so DNS converts uh, a domain name. Oh, well, it converts yeah, a domain name into an IP address. Um, yeah, so when you type in google.com, it's the service that goes out and says, hey, where, what is the address that I go to to be able to get information from google.com? And it goes off and, you know, there's some servers that hold this information and it says, cool. Google.com is actually sitting at 42.71.839.424. And computer says, great, thanks for the address. And then it heads off to that place. Uh, so that is what it is. All right. Um, let's go back to the, the academy mode and let's get, uh, let's start getting some stuff set up so that we can start working with this. What is the first thing that we're gonna do? Well. The first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to, um, let's make a repository. How about that? Let's start it off tonight by making a repository. We got plenty of time to do a little bit of stuff here. You are completely correct, Benji Jovial. That is, I tell people that all the time, that is, you know, this feels a little icky to me, um, but you are absolutely right. Um, and I, I'm gonna harp on it. I'm gonna say it every time it, it's pertinent to say it, is that every decision that is made is simply a, you know, no decisions, right? It, they're all trade-offs. They all just present a new set of trade-offs. And, you know, it's interesting because 
people always you know you get five years from now after you implemented some decision and you're like oh man i shouldn't have done that and it's like no no no, no. at the time absolutely you should have done that and then things change and that's okay like, that, like if things didn't change then you know your stuff's probably problematic anyway but um it's all just a, a list of trade-offs and even the things that feel super gross now um th there are times when you're gonna have to implement things that uh don't feel amazing um because you you know maybe you don't have the team to support uh this high class super robust implementation of something maybe you don't have the team that can do kubernetes so you got to do what we're doing now and use ansible to spin up some containers on on a host you know completely okay um completely fine it is you know it's fine is silverlight considered super gross the soup the silverlight still exist uh what, what what you know so okay i don't know what silverlight is minus silverlight being the tool that you used to have to get installed for netflix to run if that's not it then uh, let's see is this considered gross um i don't even know what silverlight is creating engaging interactive user experience for web i i, I didn't even know i don't know I, it, it seems a little weird because like look at the website it, look, it looks kind of weird and there's also this mobile old windows mobile phone over here um kind of weird this looks kind of off um so yeah probably a little gross but you know whatever floats your boat i don't i don't really know hmm. interesting this is a very interesting site look at look at the uh like the columned page like this is like a WordPress site actually hold on built with can't be can't be or can it be misleading profile warning oh, okay because it's not gonna do I guess it doesn't do any uh any um side pages that yeah, makes sense yeah okay I, I mean like i said all i remember from silverlight was oh this is why i remember silverlight so well because i feel like netflix started getting big when i went to college uh maybe a little bit before but i, I feel like netflix started getting super hot in the 2000 uh the 2008 range 2009 um and when i got to school is the first time someone introduced me to linux and i'm an idiot and I, you know, people were like, oh, Linux is great. This is in, uh, so we're on Ubuntu 20.04. Ubuntu goes up by the year. Um, so I started off in Ubuntu 8.04, I think. Um, and I got it, I got it installed. I, I completely got Windows completely off my computer. I full installed Linux because, you know, I'm a jump all in type of guy. And um, I could not get Netflix to run because I had, I like, I could not get Silverlight installed in Firefox at the time. Really, really annoying. Uh, I learned a lot from, I learned a lot though. Silverlight actually, Silverlight might be the, <laughs> funny enough, Silverlight might be the tool that I can absolutely uh, uh, lend my career to. My career may not have ever been a thing if Silverlight was not a thing, you know? Honestly, to be 100% honest, that's, I forgot all about this. So yeah, Silverlight, Silverlight, uh, we are, we have all met today because of Silverlight, okay? <laughs> For sure. Um, okay. So first thing, let's, let's go ahead and let's create a repository for this thing that we can work out of. So let's, uh, control plus, 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 plus. Let's make it all bigger and let's get going. I just saw the Ubuntu on my machine. I have no idea what to do next. Lil Mortal, I, I'm t I keep telling y'all every day that I'm gonna release this video. I'm going to release this video. So Lil Mortal, I have a, uh, a video tutorial. People always ask me like, how do you get your Linux set up? I change my setup pretty often. Like how did you get these things configured? I have a full complete dive into Linux customizations. Uh, development environment setups. It's it's pretty in depth. It, there's a lot of tweaks that I have left, like a lot of cleanups. Like it is, it's structured right now. It's like it's for the most part, all the rough cuts are done. Even most of the full cuts are done, but there's still a few spots left. 
I just haven't been able to find the time to finish it. I, I will have more time now. Like I said, I have someone helping me out as kind of a CEO role. And these first couple of weeks of building the business, I just ran into just many more things that I thought I was going to run into. Um, but I also have someone helping me with some of the production stuff uh, as well. So soon i know i've been saying it for forever uh but the good thing is that when that video drops there will be um there will be at least one video a week until there are two videos a week and then there will be two videos a week so i know you know definitely soon with a little little star by it you know we gotta get, we gotta get soon on the shirt i like that definitely soon all right so let's go into documents let's go into mastermind streams pipelines and let's go ahead and let's use uh, the GitHub tool because I'm obsessed. Yo, I'm obsessed with the GitHub with the GitHub CLI tool. It's phenomenal, uh, but you can do GH, okay? And you can go download the GitHub command line tool. You can do everything that you want uh, through, from GitHub, from the command line. So if I wanna create a brand new repository, I can do something like this and I'm just going to uh, make a directory here. Uh, actually, I think it'll create it for me. Actually, I've never done it completely uh, free like this. What's up, Frack V? Welcome, Hop Hunter. Welcome as well. Thank you so much for the follow. Dad, because browser just said, okay, heck with the JavaScript can do all this stuff. Yeah, Th this, that's that's exactly what happened. I'll switch to Ubuntu to Pop OS. Yeah, I mean, almost the same thing, but I really do like Pop OS. Um, I like it a lot. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's try it out. Uh, I think it's GitHub. Uh, I think it's repo, gh repo, create, create. Um, not a Git repository. Oh, okay, so I have to actually create a Git repository first. No problem. I'm gonna make a directory really here called, uh, what are we gonna call this? We're gonna call this conduit because that's the name of the tool that we're working on. And we'll call this conduit dash infrastructure. Yeah, conduit infrastructure. So get a gh create repo I actually think i could have typed it in and it would have created it for me um actually let's test that out real quick before i do before i do this because i want to i i'm new to the gh tool so i'm trying to figure out how it works let me go back one directory and let me remove this and let's try this now gh create conduit infrastructure no wait what 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 repo create conduit dash infrastructure and when you do this it'll take you through a nice little uh a little uh interactive thing i want this to be public great uh this will create a conduit infrastructure in your current directory go ahead and create that for me absolutely uh create a local a parent directory yes i want that as well and it lets me know that everything is uh, good to go I had a chance in my previous job to get a hold of a System76 laptop. Uh, yes, it, exactly. This is right here. This is a System76. Um, what is this? Le not Lemur. Um, I don't know what this is. Uh, Galago. It's a Galago Pro. Um, I forgot which model, like Galp 3 or Galp 4. Great laptop. Uh, I you know I I do in fact enjoy it. The only thing I, the only thing I don't like about this laptop, the only thing is the trackpad is pretty booty. Um, but I've heard the trackpads on the newer models are amazing, um, and I'm considering getting some of the newer one of the newer models, uh, something a little more powerful. This is an Ultrabook, and because I only use this laptop now for the streams, um, I'm thinking about getting something you know that we can do some wild stuff on. Because I'm also looking into getting into a little bit of uh, a little bit of machine learning and AI. So that's that's coming down the pipeline, um, and not because I'm excited to teach it to you. And I know that sounds selfish, but I want to learn um, some machine learning, so I think it's going to be fun. So I want something you know I need them CUDA cores, okay, to be able to do all the fancy stuff. Don't use a pop OS. It's so good. It's so good. You have to. Okay, so look at that. We have a GitHub repository created, right? I mean, so a Git repo, but also a GitHub repository. How can we confirm? Let's head over to GitHub.com, the best site. What's up, GAC75? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the follow. But if I head over to Brenton and then go to mastermind IO because Brenton is not where we want to be and look at our repositories. 
conduit infrastructure was updated two minutes ago so if you're not using that github tool uh, again i'm new to the github tool um, but i've heard nothing but amazing things about it so far so good i've also heard there's really good things to deal with um uh, uh pull requests uh, from here and i think you can you know with this you can you know you might never have to leave the command line for all of your github and git related things i also did not know i so I found out a while ago, someone told me about it and I didn't think, I didn't really think about it. Then we did a Git course. So we did a Git course called Tracks. Everyone who's been waiting for Tracks to go up on YouTube. Uh, it, it, <laughs> man, I really, I really suck at some of these things. Uh, there was one, there was one Tracks episode. Tracks is the course in which my computer started to have its breakdown. There's one Tracks course that I did not record because um, I had to make a change to my whole setup and it in my uh, external hard drive was not attached. The problem is we have uh, four out of the uh, five out of the six tracks courses. I have a what Twitch is getting me. Twitch is getting me that one there. I sent in a request. They said they could actually get it for me. They're getting that for me. And uh, I'm waiting for them to get it to me before I post all the tracks videos. I didn't want people to be confused when they can get through. I would have if it was number five or number six, but it's number three. And I didn't want people to watch the first two and then be super confused that the third one was gone. Uh, but I might do it anyway because you can still learn the concepts, but it does miss some stuff in the middle. Or maybe it's only a four part, maybe it's a four part series and it's number two. I can't remember. It's one of those things, but it's early. It's like early on that's it's problematic. I found a problem yeah, coming soon. 100% we're gonna get, we're gonna get coming soon shirts for sure now. I found a problem with GitHub CLI if you use multiple SSH endpoints uh, with GitHub. Huh, interesting. That makes a interesting, very interesting. Um, so you probably can't properly create repos, I guess. Hmm, maybe. I'm trying to think of what issues I would run into because I generally use multiple SSH uh, keys. That's, that's, that's very interesting. That makes sense though. It won't, oh, it won't auth at all? Even, I'm not using them. Um, hmm. That's very interesting. That sounds very sad to me, actually. Oh, well, it's a, you know, good while it lasted. We'll use it fresh as much as we can, but that's the nature of, of all the cool tooling is, you know, eventually you're going to get some, uh, you're going to get run into some problems like this. So we have this infrastructure here and there is nothing in it currently. And there's a number of ways we could do this. Um, um, you know, we can set up a Terraform directory and we'll start with that actually. So just because we're gonna be doing some Terraform first, I'm gonna make their Terraform. And we can put our Terraform code in here. Um, now we could attack this in a number of different ways. So again, imagine you are a, an engineer, you've been brought into this team to basically take them from an on-premises managed instance, uh, not, not managed, uh, an on-premise, uh, um, you know, just a server. It's just a, a, a bare metal server that they have set up. A bunch of stuff was installed by hand, you know, and you're, you're, you were brought in to take it from that uh, and take it into, you know, a much more modern method of, of operation. Um, you know, as you're doing those things, um, I, I was going somewhere with that. I lost it completely, but it's okay. It'll come back to me at the most awkward time. And then I'll just come back to it because that's how we do things here. But we're going to set up Terraform because I don't know where I was going with that. I was going somewhere important though. And now I feel like I need to find it, but I don't know where I was going. Um, Okay, well, let's get started with Terraform. So first off, I already have Terraform installed, but let me show you how to install it. Uh, we do have an uh, we do have a series called Hoist um, that's on YouTube if you want to learn a little bit more about Terraform. Uh, so we're not going to spend all the time in the world learning about Terraform, but we will get it installed really quick. So I have Terraform uh, version, I think of an old one, one uh, zero dot twelve. Absolutely. It's outdated. It lets me know that it's outdated. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the new version of Terraform really quick. So first things first, this is the pipelines course. So we are dealing with infrastructure things. 
I highly recommend you all take a look at HashiCorp.com. Hashi, oh, Terraform, well, no, no, not Terraform.io. Let's go to HashiCorp, whoa. Interesting, they don't, they don't even actually, yeah, head to HashiCorp.com, um, read a little bit about them. It's a pretty dope company. It really is a pretty cool company. Uh, it's called HashiCorp because the guy's name is like, Matt Hashimoto or something. I don't know what his first name is, uh, but he builds some cool stuff. Apparently he still builds a lot of the tools that they work on, uh, but they work on some of the biggest tools in the game. So Terraform, uh, Packer, Vagrant, uh, Nomad, Vault is a big one and console. Um, I actually think they're about, to, they're about to, I think release, they have like a secret tool being released like right now. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, I think it's a, um, I think someone, uh, Mitchell, thank you. Thank you, everyone, Mitchell. Um, I think that, I wanna say that someone someone claimed the tool might be some type of container repository or something. I don't know what it is, but they are, they, they're really, they're, they're a really cool company. And I, I gotta be honest, to me, they have the best documentation out of pretty much anybody. Um, documentation, again, is hard to do right. Their documentation is pretty darn impressive. Um, and so I would check it out if you, you know, as you're kind of learning, um, but yeah, Terraform CLI, we'll go ahead and get it installed. Um, where was the, they told us what to do when they tell us what to do. They told us what to do right here. Go to the downloads. Now Terraform is written. Fun fact, GitHub owns HashiCorp now. Really? So, so Microsoft owns HashiCorp. Really? I, I don't know. Uh, really? Hold on, I gotta look. I have to look this up real quick. We gotta take a, a quick a side break. Um, owns. That can't be. That can't be it. Microsoft bought GitHub, Cloudera. HashiCorp ownership. What is this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, does Microsoft own I feel like that would have been I feel like that definitely would have been. Okay, all right, all right. All right. I was scared about that. Maybe, maybe you weren't talking about Ashicorp. Oh, they have a multi year collaboration agreement. Maybe this is it. Um, interesting. Okay. All right. That was, uh, that was a little bit scary for some, well, I'm not scary, but uh, that would have been very interesting to me. Um, but Microsoft does own NPM though, <laughs> which I find, uh, very interesting. Um, I understand why they bought NPM, but, uh, Microsoft does now own NPM. So if you do go to npmjs.com, it is now part of GitHub, which is very interesting and didn't, didn't. Microsoft just buy something else. So also just so you, just so you all know, Microsoft is definitely trying to do with GitHub, uh, basically what GitLab is. I think they're trying to create a full, uh, like pipeline platform. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah, Microsoft did buy Zenimax. I did used to work at Zenimax. I'm on your flows. You got the whole, you got the whole chat worked up just now. Everyone was like, what? This is crazy news. Um, but yes, they do. They did buy Zenimax. Uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, Zenimax and the um, and their portfolio companies make some of my favorite games. I find that to be very interesting, for sure. Uh, let's see. So let's let's actually download HashiCorp. So HashiCorp, I mean uh, Terraform, is a cool tool developed in Go. Uh, Go is a pretty dope language, but what that means is uh, it is a compiled language. So uh, the you know it compiles down to an executable. So really, you're just gonna get, uh, we're basically gonna get this executable right here. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy the link address and I'm gonna download it to my computer. So I'm gonna wget this thing. It's gonna download really quickly for us. And it's gonna download the zip file for us. I'm gonna unzip this. And when you unzip it, all you get is this Terraform binary right here. So if I'm in this directory, I can type in Terraform version and it should pick up this Terraform. Oh no, it doesn't because I didn't do dot slash Terraform version 
So this new version of Terraform is 0.13.4, uh, but how do I upgrade it? How do I get my current installation of Terraform to be this bind, this executable right here? Well, I can simply do this, which Terraform and which Terraform will tell me where my current Terraform binary is. Very interesting. I don't know why it's in bin, but I'll leave it there. Uh, so I'll just basically just copy this Terraform to slash bin. It's actually gonna fail. Oh, no, it's not. And if I type in Terraform version now, it should have overridden. Now I'm using the most up-to-date Terraform. It's the best, the greatest we'd ever want it to be. Phenomenal. Okay. Um, oh yes, that is okay. Now I remembered it's not super awkward like I thought, uh, but it's not super awkward. The thing that I was, that I started to go, the road that I started to go down earlier was, hey, we, oh, wait, I might've just lost it again. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> when you are coming from that, uh, you have the old school on-prem um, uh, setup, and you're trying to figure out how to move into this new method of operating, uh, you need to start to structure and figure out how uh, a lot of these things are gonna be built. You need to figure out what uh, what ways you're gonna move things. Again, we talked a little bit in the beginning about the lift and shift. We talked about the kind of re-architecting and things like that. And so these are just some of the things that we're gonna have to think of here. I, I had a specific point. It was in this realm. We're in the ballpark, hold on. We're in the ballpark and I'll come back. I really wanted to tell you something about about approaching about how to approach uh some of these migrations oh okay i was gonna say hey we already have existing infrastructure uh we have some exist we have some ec2 instances and am i logged in actually i think i'm i think i logged in earlier because i haven't been logged in in a while and i wanted to make sure that my bill was paid <laughs> um because you know you know, sometimes you just leave the stuff on auto pay and sometimes it you know i might have got a new card and i'm not really worried about it because i'm you know it's not a big deal to me right now but um uh i have these some ac2 instances here and i have a couple things running i actually have um the the three instances that we need for i know this is really tiny we have development, staging, and production for this, but we also have, um, I also have a, this is a separate, oh, it's actually somewhere else. Where, where is the other academy? Oh, I also have this random redirect. Um, <laughs> this has nothing to do with pipelines. This is actually something for master, uh, for academy.mastermind.io. If you're ever wondering how, um, uh, how, how you get to from journeys, like if you're on the journeys page, you can click on decoded um, and how it gets here to my notion page uh, is because of that. And oddly enough, oddly enough, that has to be there. It's really annoying. So all of my stuff right now is going through AWS CloudFront, which is a content delivery um, network. And it that has the ability to do some redirects. You can set up an origin for this to happen. For some reason, Going through an origin like that, setting everything up properly will not allow these pages to display. So I actually needed a uh, redirect container sitting right out in the front. Um, they're not, pro they're, they were supposed to be proxying. The proxying has some issues that I'm still working on, trying to get worked out. I think I figured it out recently. I just haven't implemented it, but I would really like this to proxy rather than redirecting because it's really annoying, but yeah. Hey, uh, older Terraform modules become deprecated. I agree, I do agree with you, Sin City. I do agree with, with how that works. But okay, so we have the newest Terraform stuff. And so we could, we have a couple of options here. These servers that exist, we could import them into Terraform. We could say, cool, uh, I have these running in the cloud. So in the instance that we were talking about before, this wouldn't work because the stuff would already have to be in the cloud. But let's say um, you were making the shift to the cloud. And what you did, what maybe the first step you took, instead of going all in on infrastructure as code and stuff, is that you manually set up everything on an EC2 instance. You said, hey, I'm gonna do a lift and shift. I'm gonna, everything was set up manually over here. I'm just gonna set it up manually in the cloud, get it up and running so I know what's happening. And you do that, great. Then you would be in the situation that we're in now, fine. What you could do now is you have the option of writing new code to replicate the setup that we have now. That's one way to do it. The other way is you say, hey, I can't 
really touch like it, it's, it's going to be problematic for us to get rid of the infrastructure that exists currently and so we could import we could decide to import all of these things into our terraform configuration um and again that's a lot of that is your choice um i say when possible when you're doing stuff like this start from scratch if you can uh and i say we're gonna spin up brand new infrastructure for these things so how are we gonna do this we're just gonna start writing code to be able to spin up servers um and set it up accordingly are we doing any ssl configuration today no not today um if we do I'm trying to think of the ordering of some of these things. Maybe it'll be either be to it'll be either Wednesday or next Monday. I think is when we'll get to some of the SSL configuration to some of this stuff. Um, then we're actually not going to do. We'll have ten minutes left. We're actually not going to do very much more tonight. We are going to stop at nine tonight because uh, I've got to do something. Um, but we are going to stop at nine tonight. Um, so we, you know, we we've got ourselves a good base, and let's see if we can get something spun up really quick. So. What does Terraform look like, um, Terraform code? If you're using VS Code, go ahead and make sure you spin up, I mean, make sure you grab the Terraform extension. I'm not gonna be using VS Code. I just like to tell people this because they don't know there's a cool Terraform extension, which will tell you how to do some of these things. All right, now, Terraform has a, uh, it uses something called providers. And these providers are basically packages that allow you to, to interact with the API of the service that you uh, that you choose. So Terraform, let's look at it really quick. Terraform is really cool. The reason why people might want to choose Terraform, and if you're looking into learning a configuration management tool such as Terraform, the reason why you would choose Terraform is uh, specifically almost, well, there, I think there are two really good reasons, th three really good reasons to use Terraform for this, um, for your provisioning. But the, the, the biggest one is that it is uh, compatible with many, different services, many different providers. Uh, we're not just talking about the major cloud providers like we have here with AWS and Azure, uh, Alibaba Cloud, Google Cloud Platform. So all these things, VMware Cloud, all this other stuff, it is compatible with, but it is configurable for some non, you know, uh, some non-standard digital ocean, you know, do they even have, they have Linode in here, Linode or Linode, they have, they got all of the, they got all the stuff in here. They got infrastructure software. So we're not even talking about cloud providers. You can use it to interact with, uh, to manage chef and Docker, um, and Kubernetes stuff as well. Um, you can do GitHub stuff with it as well. So check this out. You know, you can do, you can set up repositories and like you can actually create users and GitHub and all of this stuff and manage, you can actually manage your GitHub organizations via Terraform. That is a phenomenal uh, tool for that. And that's actually, hmm, that's interesting. That might be something that I might have to do. Um, databases. So, it, you know, it had these providers are written and allow us to interact with many, many different tools and things. And so that is why, that's the number one reason why this is great. Um, I think that the number two reason why this is great is uh, that people use it, that people love it. I think it has to do with the, um, with the ease in which, uh, the relative ease in which you can write um, these things. So again, this is written, this stuff is written using uh, something called HashiCorp configuration language or HCL. And um, it's pretty, it's it's very readable. Um, it's not crazy difficult to write. Oh, what happened here? Latest version. That's where we're at now. There's no, oh, that was weird. It said there was no documentation, but we fixed it. But here's some example usage here. CM Griffin, shout out. This today's been an, a phenomenal raid day. Uh, first off, shout out. It's good to see you. I told you all, all, all of, all of my good friends are coming through tonight. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, definitely check out CM's channel. Build some cool stuff. A very fun channel over on his channel. You'll get things like pizza hoodies. I don't have any cool pizza hoodies, but one day I will have a pizza hoodie because they look really cool. Uh, but definitely super entertaining channel. You can learn a lot from there as well. Build some dope stuff. You know, we're not building a lot of stuff over here. One day, one day we will be. But that's dope. I, I appreciate that. Uh, like I said. I've had some, uh, you all have shown me a substantial amount of love today and I do appreciate it. 
so we're finishing we're just everyone who came in from uh cm's channel we are uh doing a eight week eight week boot camp on um on infrastructure um it's called pipelines and we're learning how to uh uh to you know deal with web infrastructure we're really learning about software delivery automation infrastructure and we just started this week is our, our starting two weeks of infrastructure as code so being able to codify entire pieces of infrastructure um you know both the configuration as well as uh, provisioning these things and so we're just getting into we have some reference uh, architecture for some microservices that we have that exists that make this application called conduit and we are now in here um kind of just we planned it out earlier and we're now going to try to get started but we're not going for much longer. We're only going for a couple more minutes tonight. Um, but we just kind of laid the foundation for this. But we're talking about Terraform. That's the tool that we're jumping into right now. Um, and so, yeah. So one of the things I said is that we were saying is the people, the reason why people use this tool Terraform uh, has to do with, again, the amount of things you can manage with it, as well as the readability of it, the ease in which you can write things. Um, you basically just declare a resource like this and you basically put all of its configuration you know with keys and values underneath and that's that's like for the most part that's the the main crux of what you're gonna be doing um as you get farther along like you can add a substantial amount of dynamic programming concepts to this it has you know it has functions it has uh the fun different functions you can do it's got loops as well if you need to loop through things so you can you know it's got a couple of different uh, it's got lots of different uh logic tools that you can use to basically again talk we talked about the declarative versus imperative uh it allows you to declare what you want and don't you don't have to worry about the steps to get it there and this will take care of all the steps to get you to where you need to be now uh just real quick so you can see this working um we won't configure it how it's supposed to be uh first let me go back over to let me go back over to the face cam. Why are we at the face cam? Because uh, one thing that I did not do is this computer has not been used in a while and um, my AWS CLI is not set up properly. So I'm just putting, I'm, all I'm doing right now is I'm putting in my credentials on the AWS CLI and actually, well, actually I'll show you up until that point and then I'll move off my face in case you're trying to do, in case you're trying to do this on your own. Um, I actually don't even think I have AWS CLI installed on here. Okay, not a big deal. We can install AWS CLI really quick. I feel like I I can't remember the last time. I don't know how this is not installed actually. So AWS CLI actually has a version two now, which is a you know standalone installer, which is really, really nice. A standalone binary, which makes it super easy to do. So let's see. How would you write Python code with HashiCorp language? You wouldn't um you at least I, there's not that i would know of i don't i don't think you can um yeah i don't think you can let's see unless there's unless there's some kind of provider that allows you to do it i doubt it prereqs for linux install it on linux uh for specific version no, i just want the whole thing so go ahead and give me this give it all to me and let's paste it in and let's go ahead and get real quick installed and then we'll just try to provision one one thing just so you can uh, people who haven't seen it in action can see how fast and how easy it is to do some really dope things uh inside of uh terraform and again if you're someone who's working on your own projects maybe you've been learning google cloud platform maybe you've been learning azure Take a look at the Azure provider, you know, Google Terraform providers and look into Azure and you can start to see the way that they do things. It is very similar uh, across the board. Um, the Im implementation is obviously different because they're different platforms, but yeah, found pre-existing AWS CLI installation. Please rerun install script with the update flag. So did it download it um, and it did unzip. And what was the last command? Uh, sudo dot slash AWS um, install dash dash update. Okay, so it's installed. Maybe I have to should it a reset. Hold on, CD documents, uh, mastermind streams, pipelines. 
Oh, whoops. Let me make this a little bit larger. AWS. No module named AWS CLI. Huh. AWS. Oh, is this a Python error? Huh, okay, this is very interesting. Uh, user local bin AWS, gross. Um, let's check some of this stuff out. Let's do a little bit of live troubleshooting real quick before we get out of here, even though I do have to get out of here. Dot local um, bin, where are we at bin? And I don't think it's, uh, so there's AWS there. Yeah, that's a Python error. Um, okay, what, what is, uh, I wonder, that's weird. Um, it's not weird, it's actually not weird. Um, hold on, so let's talk about this really quick. Uh, here's, here, are the, here are the two things you can do when you receive an error like this. Ah, uh, see, I, I didn't wanna use, so if I use pip, I think pip will install, a, oh, whoops. I think Pip will install AWS CLI V1. Um, that's fine. I'm gonna do Pip3 install AWS CLI. Yeah. Uh, so you have one. Of, you have a couple of different options for when you're trying to troubleshoot something like this. I can do it a couple of different ways. Uh, one way would be to take in the knowledge that I have and my history with Python and my, you know, and troubleshoot this issue. Or I can simply Google the error. And I highly recommend you all Google the error. Uh, we're trying this, we're just, we're just, you know, again, that's why I like having, I highly recommend having a machine or a VM or something that you don't mind uh, messing around with and not being too worried about messing up uh, your, your installation of things. Uh, since you can kind of just, mess around and learn. I learned, I learned a lot from this. Um, I've broken a lot of machines though. So again, I would say, uh, make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, and this does work. So, and it is V2. So for now, we will go ahead and do this. Now, uh, the way that I need to do is I have, I have, oh, oh, wait, I have something set up. Does it work? Hold on. Okay, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's what I figured. It was probably, I probably deleted it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paste in uh, my new information. So I'm gonna go back to my close-up cam. I'm gonna paste in my information so you all cannot get into my AWS account because you know, I don't want you to get into my AWS account. It's, it's pretty much as simple as that. You know, I don't want you to hack me. Uh, it is 2020 and a lot of bad things have happened this year already. And uh, I don't need another bad thing to happen, you know? So I'll just keep my stuff as private as I can. Usually, you know, I've learned my lesson though. Usually I would go to the screen, I do what I need to do, and then I would be done doing the process, but stuff would still be, you know, on the screen, just up a little bit and I would switch back and then everyone would have my credentials. I will not make that mistake today. And if I do, I will rotate out my credentials immediately as I've had to do before uh, because I was being stupid. And so hopefully that doesn't happen right now. Clear the screen, back over successful okay so now if i do an aws s3 ls boom i now have access to all of my um all of my buckets um that we have set up um actually first off if anyone is on right now from the baltimore black techies uh meetup is the site still working because I have not done any maintenance or did anything for you guys. But yeah, got a bunch of old stuff in here. <laughs> Please, I, I'm sorry if it's not working anymore. Um, but we got a lot of stuff here. So great, phenomenal. Why did I do that? Um, nope, I will not type history. I don't think it'll show up. I really don't think it'll show up, but um, you know, it's, uh, it, I'm not typing history uh, for that reason. And the reason I don't think it'll type history is because that AWS configure command is interactive. Um, but I don't know. Um, I kind of want to type it to see, but I don't want to rotate because I'm lazy. Uh, so real quick, the reason I had to do that is simply uh, because AWS is, uh, allows you to authenticate um, via two different methods, uh, username and password if you're signing in from the console, or you can access it with uh, um, secret keys, a secret key, um, you know, combination, a, a, a secret access key, 
I forgot what the two pieces are, but you have two keys here um, and it allows you to access them. I don't know why I'm, I'm brain farting a lot. Um, but that's what I did to be able to authenticate programmatically with Amazon Web Services. And so now I can actually run some Terraform against it if we were to write some Terraform. So let's write some Terraform really fast, just so you can see how it works. And then next time we will get, the plan is next time to, to completely uh, codify all of the infrastructure. So we'll, we won't go over any slides next time, straight codifying of the infrastructure, networking, DNS, all of it. Uh, and then we will hop into some configuration management tools uh, on Monday and we will get all of the services and things set up and uh, we will extend that on Wednesday of next week. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, but let's, let's do this real fast. You know, every every single class has to have a, you know, a cliffhanger ending, a big wow moment for what we're gonna be doing. So we don't need any of this stuff here. Um, infrastructure. Actually, I'm just gonna rm-rf uh, Terraform, the whole Terraform directory. And then I'm gonna make it again because there was stuff in there. I could have just deleted everything inside of it, uh, but we'll call it Terraform. And here's what we will do here. Uh, when you are in, uh, now I gotta recall what you gotta do when you make Terraform stuff. So Terraform kind of like Git, you have to do a couple of different things. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna initiate this as a Terraform um, uh, space. Uh, we're gonna basically set it up so that everything works. We actually don't need to run this now, but I'm gonna run it anyway. This is kind of the first thing that you do. So that it, initially, it initializes everything. Um, now I can start to work within Terraform. It says, hey, this has been initialized in an empty directory. Uh, there's been nothing here. Um, you need to go ahead. You can start working. Uh, I'm gonna start working now. So I'm gonna say Vim and we'll call this uh, main.tf. You can call us whatever you want, um, but .tf is the file extension for Terraform. And so if we go back over to the, uh, the, the docs, the documentations that tell you how to use this, it's got some stuff here already. And so what I'm gonna do is, you know, I'm gonna uh, copy and paste this. Mm, interesting, actually. Oh, this changed. Interesting. Okay, I'm glad I looked at this because it would have worked anyway, because uh, I would have done this, because this is what I know. Um, and now it's changed a bit. Cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the boilerplate code and we're gonna paste it in and we'll talk about it real quick. And then we'll modify it to our own liking. All right. What this does is it first tells Terraform what provider you wanna use. Remember, we said Terraform had you know a bunch of different ways for you to interact with different services. The provider is how you allow this to happen. And uh, so what we have here is we're telling it Terraform, please download and use uh, the AWS provider. You tell it where it is, what version you want to use. Uh, you know, all these, this code is managed elsewhere and it will pull this code down for us. And so we do need this here. And then uh, after we tell it what provider we need, we then need to configure that provider. And so our provider is called AWS. Then we can set up some defaults about the provider. So uh, the, the region is gonna be US East one. And then the profile, um, uh, so profile is just um, a way for you to uh, set different credentials for, you know, if you have different account names and stuff, I'm pretty sure I'm on the default profile. So I think I can do this. Um, it might need to be, I don't know. It might need to be a, uh, a string maybe. I don't know. We'll find out in a second. This will create a VPC. I we're going to comment this out because I think we're going to save and use this next time. Uh, let's go ahead and create a simple EC2 instance really quick because it's easy to see. It's easy for our eyes to notice. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that. So create uh, EC2 instance. And again, if you don't know what an EC2 instance is, no big deal. It's just a virtual machine. It's AWS's name for virtual machine. Terrible naming. I know uh, AWS is awful at naming their services, but an EC2 instance is a simple server. It's a virtual machine and you can uh, set it up by size or whatever you'd like to do. Um, so let's see, resources is gonna be an EC2 instance. AWS instance is what we're gonna need. And so they'll give you some code here on exactly what you need to do. Um, and we can copy this code here. And so you basically are gonna set up these little resource categories um, or, or, or blocks right here. So this actually looks a little different, but it's fine. 
oh it's because it has tags in it. never mind but remember i said it was just a bunch of keys and values so it kind of looks interesting it kind of looks like a little bit of j it looks a little bit yamily a little bit jasony and so it might be a little bit weird what's up json condition it's funny because we just started talking about json you know we we got this javascript object notation type stuff here with the curly braces so it's good to have you what's up seska boom welcome to the channel the uk iranian i love it welcome what's up rbo as well hector it is phenomenal to have you here with us. Uh, what's it? And Steph, welcome as well. Alan Swenson, FD God, welcome. A Cosmic as well. It's good to have you all here. All good. All good. I well, I appreciate uh, I appreciate the dedication to giving me a follow when you did get back. Um, it's good to have you here. We're just uh, learning a little bit of infrastructure as code tonight. We're actually finishing up right now. Uh, this is a four parter. Basically, we'll be doing some more uh, Wednesday and then Monday and Wednesday of next week. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna spin up a quick EC2 instance. So take a look at what we have here. I will leave the tag there. So what it has is uh, this is actually not gonna work the way it's set up right now. But we'll fix this. Um, it's a bunch of keys and values. So it says, hey, we want an AWS instance because that's the, what the provider calls it. The web is just a name. We can call this whatever we want. And we, let's call this mastermind uh, stream test or something, whatever you want to call it. And then you have to, there's some there's some required fields here and we could go in and see what the required fields are. Um, we're just taking a look at what they have right now. And so the AMI, AMI is for Amazon Machine Image. This is the base image that this will be booted off of. Um, we'll grab uh, a string for it. So what was here before this, says, hey, go ahead and grab this data from, it, 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 the data is a paradigm uh, that exists inside of Terraform. We're not gonna be using this yet. We will get there. There's ways to use variables and uh, grab different things from different places, but we're just gonna grab a raw AMI string really quick. The fastest way to get an AMI string when you don't know any of the websites or anything like that uh, is to go right into EC2 and, and either grab one from when you're running already. So, you know, we are running some instances right now. What is this? Why isn't it showing me any information? Oh, it's because it's all down. Uh, so I could grab the AMI from here if I wanted, uh, or I could try to start a new one. So these image on machine images uh, basically are base, our base images, our base operating systems um, that are set up um, and they are unique. They are unique to each um, region of the world. So even though um, right now we are in Northern Virginia, US East one, this would not, the AMI ID I'm trying to use here would not work if we try to deploy to US, uh, to like US West. Um, it wouldn't work over there because it needs to be unique. There's, there's a unique ID per place. Uh, but that's not that's not super important right now we're not learning aws we're just seeing how something like this might work so i'm going to paste in the ami id uh, and i'm going to save it and so all we have is the provider and the ec2 instance again ignore everything down here and the tag is just some metadata that's going to set up the name of the server called hello world and this is the size of the server t3 micro t3 micro you know it provides a certain amount of cpu and ram uh, but it's just a sizing model that aws uses and so um now i need to actually do a terraform in it again because i need to be able to get the uh the pro i need to download all the provider uh, data and stuff and get everything set up. So I'm gonna run Terraform in it. And you can see this time it says, I'm initializing the back end. So we're gonna talk a little bit about state uh, next time, but it's initializing right now um, where the state is gonna be held at because I didn't define anything. State is actually gonna be managed locally. And then it's gonna just, right now it's just downloading all the, the, the provider information that it needs for us to get ready to go. And it says, hey, Terra, uh, everything's been successfully initialized, you're good to go. And so if I wanna make sure that my code is good and is working, I can do a Terraform uh, format just to format it. And it actually it actually just like modifies some code of the spacing and stuff. Um, and I can do a Terraform uh, plan. Um, actually, I can do a Terraform validate as well. Uh, and validate says, hey, check to see if this configuration that I wrote is syntactically proper. Uh, it's not going to check if it's right with the provider, but it's going to say, is it syntactically correct? It is. I'm going to do a Terraform plan, which you no longer have to do, but I'm going to do a plan. 
and plan is going to say cool i'm going to check the local state information i'm going to check the code that you wrote and then i'm going to tell you what's going to happen if i were to run this code so it's like a dry run and it's going to tell me hey i'm going to add i'm going to create all of these things i'm going to basically add one item not going to change anything i'm not going to destroy anything that makes sense because we only added a single item these are just all of the uh, resources that need to be created you know so you know i put in this ami id and you know all these things are going to get created so i'm going to say terraform apply and it's going to run another plan that plan does the same thing if i wanted to apply it i have to type in the word yes and now it's creating it's provisioning these resources it is building the house um and so you can already see how this is kind of cool because I wrote in code, I said, hey, I would really like an EC2 instance. I would like it to be this size, which is T3 micro. I would like you to boot it up from this AMI and I gave it an AMI ID. And I would also like you to give it this name. I basically codified all the way that I wanted things set up and it's already done. And now if I go here and I refresh, check this out. We have a hello world server. That's a T3 micro right here already running very, very fast. So now, consistent, repeatable, and reliable. If I wanted to spin up another server, check this out. I could say just like this, you know, it's it's code. I could do this and I could say, cool. I actually wanted two of these. So I can do a count equals two and I'll just auto format it for you. And count equals two and check this out. I'll save it. I'll do another Terraform apply. And all I did was modify a bit of code and again, now it's gonna say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add another server. I'm gonna only add one and I'm gonna type in yes. And just like this, it's gonna give us another server with the exact same configuration, which is great. Uh, makes it super easy for you to template things out, to configure things out, it's really nice. Um, it also means that this is code now. So remember, we're working, uh, we created a Git repository for this. So uh, we can we can manage our infrastructure the exact same way that the application is managed. And that is, that's game changing. It's, it really is game changing. So, um, so this is nice. You know, I created this server and now, you know, now we have, it'll probably be two hello world servers here. Two hello world servers are now running right here. And then you might say, cool, we did all this for testing purposes, super great, you know, but we don't really want to keep these things up. Um, next time we're gonna pick back up with this stuff and look at this, I can do Terraform destroy and it's gonna go through, it's gonna check the local state, it's gonna check what exists and it's gonna say, hey, I'm gonna, rem I'm not gonna add anything, I'm not gonna change anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete two things. I wanna destroy two things. It'll tell you what it's gonna destroy. I type in yes and it is gonna remove them for me. So. The same way that I just spun these up very quickly, I'm, I'm tearing them down now. Next time we come along, I can literally run a Terraform apply and now our infrastructure will be back and it'll be ready to go. And this is the power of infrastructure as code. I can do all the management via the code, all the changes via code. If I need to give it a new uh, apply, some new internal uh, subnetting or something, I can do that. If I need to add in an Elastic IP, I can do that. If I need to configure DNS and connect the two, I can do that. I can do all the things and I can do it through code. And so it is deleting, it's very fast, it's very repeatable, um, it's very nice. So I just wanted to get to a point where we actually did some stuff like this. Uh, this is then used to create a pipeline similar to Jenkins. Yeah, um, yes, you can, because it's code, now you can manage your your infrastructure via a pipeline. So you can set up a Jenkins pipeline or any CI pipeline uh, to actually deploy your infrastructure, to build, to test, to deploy your infrastructure. Now there's some caveats there to the infrastructure testing and things, but absolutely, that is absolutely what you can do. Um, and so it, de it now deleted these things, excellent. And now I can say, cool, we got things going uh, and this is code. So I'm gonna say, cool, I'm gonna, I really shouldn't push the Terraform state, um, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> uh, this is a Git repo, Git status. Uh, get in it. I mean, no, get a uh, get add get commit dash M. Um, set up uh, basics for Terraform. 
actually i'm actually going to remove the state file actually just because um i we're going to add a kid ignore and everything later um but we don't actually need any of this right here right now and you don't actually need it either all right and so now we will get add get where'd that commit go i didn't actually run the commit commit dash m um added basic terraform whatever just for now Ugh, i need to set up my keys i say it every single time and i never do it but it's all good and now this code is going to be up in github available for you to use uh to check out if you want to if you feel the need to check it out uh i'm not sure why so much is writing objects why what did i i committed something that i wasn't supposed to commit obviously yeah what, what what's here uh oh oh the provider information okay um that's fair oh this is gonna be a mess isn't it it's gonna be a mess it's gonna be a mess that's okay um here's what we'll do uh get lg what i don't have get lg assault on here um all right that was my first commit um that sucks i can revert um I can revert that, but let me see what happens if I try to get add this. Get commit. Um, removed. Basically, what just happened is I included all the provider plugin information. Um, not really thinking because uh, the reason why I didn't catch that, I would have definitely caught that on my Windows computer. But I have. It's been a while since I updated the um, my zshrc on here, and my ls command is alias to one that does not show hidden files, um, and so I never default to doing that. It's all good. Uh, removed. Uh, this is not gonna work. I don't think it's gonna work. Um, removed. What do we removed? Uh, Terraform. Uh, plugin folder. Because it's still going to have, it still has that, uh, that history there. Um, I'm going to need to revert, um, before I do anything else. Yeah. Okay. So it's interesting because I actually don't know. Um, oh yes. The, the amend, the amend. I like that. Um, yeah, there we go. Learning some uh, some Git stuff. Oh, I have to I have to change something first. Uh, can I commit? Uh, can I force commit? Can you do that? Um, or does the min go at the end? And not here. No. Oh, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, you know? Sometimes you just don't know how to spell and that's your problem. I can't tell you how many times that's been that way. And uh, let's see if, is this gonna work this time? Didn't wanna solve any Git problems today, but uh, let's see, that seems like it's going to push less objects. Ah, I see, uh, that still feels like it's pushing it's still trying to push everything. I'll do some get I'll do some get magic in a second if I have to. Yeah. Um it's weird because hmm, it's the it's the first commit. So it seems really weird. Like, can I like here's what we're gonna do? Here's here's how we're gonna fix this. You know how you fix uh git issues when you're um yeah, um here's how you here's how you fix it all. Um, the way that you fix it all is, is yeah, the binaries are historical now. Exactly. Um, let's see. Um, and the way that you shed it from the historical commits is with a revert, right? Revert pulls it from, right? I think, I think a revert is how I'm going to have to shed it from the historical commits. Um, but the problem with with revert is revert um hmm this is actually very interesting let's let's try this real quick i've never i've never been in the situation where i have to revert it when it's the very first one um 
so so how is that how is that actually because does it does it revert move the head back one and if you want to throw away all uncommitted changes reset set hard no, not reset i want revert record new commits to reverse the effect of some earlier commit yeah and so don't you have to oh um let's see i think you can target uh files from history somehow revert makes a commit that inverts that commits uh, okay let's let's try this out um get log and i usually have git lg installed um so i don't have to do the whole commit to hash and to just show me visually what happened and i did this on the very uh first commit right here what's up eric Dev? how are you doing also the all that four thank you so much first off I, i'll give you a shout out in a second we're just trying to wrap up here um this was not supposed to be any we, we were we were doing the last little bit and obviously the you know you're gonna run into problems when you're just trying to get off so you can go get some dinner um you know but it is just how it is um and this is going to be the merge here um delete no, it only deleted one no 30 deletions that feels weird but maybe it didn't tell us because it was hit uh so let's let's see something really quick um so then after you do a revert do you have to do a so it creates a commit so then because it let's do a git log how about that huh so how do I see um, now go through history and find the files and matches and removes them? Um, so you're saying I could have done a git revert on a specific file. I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, I'll check out. Let me let me see. Let me, so so when you do a git revert, do you have to just push like do you have to like do a hard push over? Um, let, let, me, let, me, let me see what's happening here. Not a master let me see master mind i right, still gonna try to do the same thing um all right I don't know how to, I, I don't know how to, this is a good problem that I don't know. Well, that I don't know how to solve easily. So I guess you can, you can revert a single, see I need to reverse that whole directory. So the problem is I just, I just reverted the commit that added this, um, but it did not, it, it removed the, of the only other file that was included in this. Um, very odd, very, very odd. Uh, is the file actually even still there first off look the, the the directory isn't even there anymore um but i need to remove it from the actual history and not from the local um but i don't i don't know i don't i don't know how to i did it in this very first commit so i don't know i don't know what uh this is very odd but what i do need to do is i need to do a git checkout dot uh get check out uh master i'm already on master let me do a git pull um get pull dash you origin master uh let me do a git reset really quick hard you shouldn't be doing uh hard resets um oh i've i've broke all of my stuff you separate paths hmm I broke it all. I broke it all. I, I don't know what happened here, but here's what we can do. Here's exactly what we can do. Watch and learn the magic of everything that you would ever want to do with the phenomenal GH tool. So get um, um, with GH. So get GH is for GitHub uh, repo. What are my options for repo dash dash help? just help uh, oh no i actually can't delete anything all right here's what we're gonna do we're gonna make this even better really quick just so we can get out of here because i need some din din for sure brenton 
sorry everyone i'm gonna say this every time every time so you should be doing the same thing every time we end up um every time we end up in this brenton directory uh brenton first off uh is the most ferocious of all the dragons uh we googled uh, we were trying to name a repository we googled um the best dragon names and brenton was one of them it was right next to uh draco it was right next to some other cool dragon names uh but we can't delete this repository because it is brenton and you have to say it just like that because it is uh it's really weird no no we're gonna delete it all we are 100 percent gonna delete it off do a get rough log let's do that then you can just reset hard the shah but that's a problem um the the, the shah that i want to go back to when we did reset it 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 didn't it only removed it removed the entire directory because it was everything that was in there but let's do it again so i think it i think it did do that i think it actually did do it um but let's see but you have to go through uh brenton because of github's uh honestly if anyone from github is watching I, eric, eric i i think you're a microsoft person uh the the flow to get to the repository that you want is uh is bad it's bad all right so checking out moving from master to master initial added basic terraform um yeah so get so the get reset um till the one that will only reset me one that, that'll, that'll move it that'll move it to this head I, so i can do that but all right let's see let's see if that works i mean hey sometimes you, you know he's gotta you gotta laugh so delete terraform so there's exactly there's nothing here um you can use a shot on the list that you want to go back to. The problem is that the shot, the 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 shot that I want to go back to is the very first commit. That I think that's the problem, right? Like it, maybe I'm maybe I, maybe I'm not understanding. Like I understand how to fix this problem if it wasn't the first commit, um, and maybe I don't understand exactly how the revert. So I can go back to the first commit. The very first commit is the one where I included the files that I didn't want to commit. I think that's I think that's what I'm saying. So I can go back to that one which uh, I will go back to, let's see. What's up, uh, tail learn code? Well, first off, shout out. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we are we are at the very end of the stream fighting some Git issues really quick, um, but it is good to have you. Welcome, welcome to the stream. We were learning a little bit of infrastructure as code tonight. Um, and let's see, so Git, I mean, so let me see. So. The initial commit is this one. This is the initial commit, right? Okay, so you can do that with a git rebase. So you can do that with a git, but a rebase. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what the dash. I'm gonna find out what the dash I is for rebase. I'm very familiar with rebasing. Um, that seems. Won't that pull? I'm. I okay. I'm, I can try that as well. Um, let's see. So this is the this is the initial commit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna first do this. So you're saying I first, I think you're saying that I can do a git reset and you know re reset back to okay, okay. Um, unstaged changes after reset. So if I do a git status, these things are deleted, but. That's not the problem. Make a commit that removes them. Do a git rebase I, and then you can reorder the, oh, that, okay, everyone. What Eric.dev just said, that is, uh, that is a phenomenal git foo right there. That is very interesting. Uh, yes, make a commit that removes them. Um, so this will actually create a commit. So if I commit this right now, this does actually remove them. Um, and so what does the I do? I need to check what the I does, but you can reorder the commits and squash the commit that removes the files into the initial commit. That is very, very interesting. Um, okay, let me try to see this. Let me, let me, you know, that is, that is interactive rebase opens up Vim for the list. Of, hold up. Wait a minute. I did not know that. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's, I like that. So, um, only thing that's weird is I'm going to, 
but the only reason why is here's why this is dumb um get rm terraform main i don't want to do that um changes use deleted oh it's actually gone not stage four commit um very deleted why does it well it is gone see this is the problem it already deleted all my stuff i think that's i think that's also the problem so that was because it did the it did it did a well that's fine let's uh i do want to i do want to try this interactive uh thing real quick so I, just i want to learn first so let's uh let's see what happens really quick um and you're saying now i can commit this create a new commit and so i can say hey i removed uh all of my terraform um plugins okay 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 so we did that uh so now my git log shows that i have uh removed my terraform plugins and then let's see this is weird uh get rebase dash i which is an enter uh, oh wait uh there's no tracking for the current branch what oh whoops this is not them i didn't set see this is an old i'm sorry this is an this is an old uh this is an old zshrc this is also an old vimrc this is a computer that we were not working off of and this is uh really annoying but okay so you're saying the first I need to get checkout. Uh, how did I get off of or Oh, cause I went to head. Okay. Oh man. See, I didn't even know what I, uh, um, what is it? Not known to get actually. So I actually think <laughs> audio master, I don't know. But I think hard origin master is going to take me back here. Dash dash hard. This is what I couldn't do before either. Or am I using the wrong? Um... Null character. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is where we are. This is where we are. Okay. This is where we are, where I can't even check out. Uh, I can't even, oh, that's cause I still have checkout. That's why I'm dumb. Nope, 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 nope. I, you know, you probably caught it before me, but I'm at the point where I'm frustrated now. Uh, I'm not really that frustrated to be honest with you. I'm just hungry. But fade of biggest argument, origin master, unknown revision path or working tree, use dash dash to separate paths from revisions. Uh, like get command revision dash dash file okay go back to the ref log uh first off you all got me into a mess here okay i was fine before i started taking no, i'm joking i'm completely joking all right let's 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 let's, let's just let's get this going okay we're almost there we're almost we're almost out of the woods the problem is we also uh, i'm gonna be 100 honest with you there's a, there's probably a lot of engineers right now who would probably really get mad at me for saying this if this was your initial commits now you're not going to have a uh, command over this repository and i, I wouldn't and i would not uh, i, I would have this we we modified a single file uh there were faster ways to do this want to pick your brain right quick quick question coming go for it go for it drop it and i will answer the question while we're doing this if that's good, then do your git rm commit. Um, I mean, what? I mean, this is where we, I feel like we're exactly where we were. We just added in some other commits that didn't work. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, so gotcha, git. Uh, which one is that? That is uh, 5410EC. Let's try that. All right, Terra, remove Terraform plugin folder. So that's when I removed it. That's great, but 
there is a commit that exists before this which included it and i don't think it's going to remove it from the push um if because of the way that git ye works um but let's see uh let me see from there that should get you before you did the, re the revert okay then check the get log the the git log to make sure so git log um yes that is correct i i um okay i i do think we are i think we're okay there all right and then if that's good then do your git rm commit so you're saying do so okay 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 so you're saying do a git log and then remove this one because this is the commit that i want gone i want this commit gone right here and so what's here I, I reset hard i do have my code here so if i do git rm and i remove the initial commit let me let me follow now you need to rm the files that weren't supposed to be there so you're saying git revert sha of first commit that's that's this one hold on that should have been yeah, it should have been this one. Did that, that didn't, why didn't that work? Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I think I need to, I think, I don't think I need to do that. I think I need to actually RM the, uh, okay, get rebase. All right, hold on, let me, let me, dash I had to, okay, let's see that. Oh, okay, okay, now you're speaking. Okay, that's, oh, actually, no, this is interesting. Head, so, adding in adding in a head on the rebate on an interactive rebase seems wait, wait, wait the dash i was afterwards right oh no it was forehead two my my computer doesn't like that invalid upstream head two but it's invalid upstream head two because there's not do i need to go back to the other thing because there aren't two heads uh like there aren't two spots to go back to um currently there's only one to go back to yeah there's only there's only one to go back to there we go um so let's see um all right so i'm using nano here i don't know how to use nano um because i did not ch again this is i didn't change my shell to use this now place a d in front of that commit um let's see I actually don't even know pick uh now place a d in front of that commit typo in the tilt in the dash two. Oh, no i had tilted two there but there weren't there weren't actually two things here yeah i don't see the first commit there i think i i i told you we, we broke something that really confused me and then i think we made it worse and now i'm like i don't even know where we're at <laughs> really interesting i probably did something that completely oh the first commit isn't there because we reverted it <laughs> we, because we were we reverted it so what i think what will happen is if we do a git all right let's hold on hold on, hold on. We, we can do this we can do this we, we can't stop here yet we can't we can't stop here let's do let's do this really quick <laughs> no 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 let's see let's see give me one second here's what we're about to do we're about to do a git um hold on where, where's the initial where's the actual initial um let me see let me see let me see i can't say how many times i've been yeah i mean i've i've never been this deep no okay i've definitely been this deep but here's the thing this is what this is what you do this is what you do you say that someone else broke your computer and then you redo all of your work later. I'm joking. All right, so I'll say it again. rm-rf.get and get in it. I do, in fact, well, so that will not work um, until I, I think I, if I do that, I have to clear out. It's already been pushed up to the remote. So yes, the recap of the main issue is simply that um, uh, really is that I didn't keep this computer up to date. And so my LL alias did not show me hidden files. So I thought I was safe. Um, we had a Terraform directory, a hidden Terraform directory that had a lot of plugin information. The same thing as if you were dealing with like JavaScript and you had all your, basically if you checked in your NPM modules and now Git will not accept 
um, it won't accept a push for this. And even when we remove this from Git, it tries to still, even on a push, it still is attempting to push these things up for some reason. Um, if it was pushed to remote, you can just force push. Um, okay, but uh, maybe, hmm, maybe I'm so averse to force pushing that, uh, well, let's see if it's still here or not. It is not here. Uh, get. This, I don't, I don't think this is gonna work, but it might. You know, I mean, if we must brute force, you know, then let's brute force. Yeah, see, it's still doing this, but that's because this stuff is still in the, these things have been committed. Uh, oh, actually, you know what's funny? It has not been pushed. I am wrong. I am wrong. Brenton, sorry, you gotta say Britain. Uh, and you have to say Britain because the only way to get to your repositories easily is to click on the first one that you see. It has not been pushed. We could, you're right. Oh my gosh. In my mind, it had been pushed already. Uh, here's what you, this, here's what we gotta do, y'all. You are right. Uh, rm-rf dot get, remove that folder. Do another, get in it. Um, and then we just got to go ahead and add this. Oh man, man, we could have saved ourselves so much time. I was confident in my brain that had been pushed already. And I was trying to fix the problem properly instead of going with my heart from the very beginning. Um, but sure. <laughs> get status, get add, get commit. Uh, we are super people. We fixed all the problems. There we go. We fixed every single one. Oh, oh, <laughs> whoops. We fixed all the problems here. And now we're gonna push this to the sky. Get on up there, dash you, origin master. Spell master correctly. Authenticate because we're not using keys right now, which I don't, I'm doing all the things that annoy me that like we should have keys on here. Go, 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 go. Let's go. We did it. We did it. We did it. It's finally there. I, man, I really thought this was already up. Uh, this would have been, uh, that would have been super easy. Um, that would have been very, very easy if uh, I, did, I realized that it didn't push. It never originally pushed because the files were too large. Um, Man, you know, see, that's why sometimes you take a break. We were already over time. So I was like, ah, we got to rush and finish this. And look, look where we ended up. We went down the lonely road of Git problems. Uh, I definitely want to do an interactive rebase. I, I rebase uh, often. Rebasing is my preferred method of development. Uh, I, I don't usually merge. I almost always rebase uh, in my workflows. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, uh, I'll have to do this interactive one. We did it. Thank you so much. Werewolf dev for, uh, for the 10,000 bits. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for the support everyone. Also, thank you everyone for sticking around for so darn long. Uh, that's pretty great. I appreciate the love. Also, all of my friends came through. Thank you everyone for all of the amazing raids tonight. Um, tomorrow, if you are interested at all, we will absolutely fight through some more problems. Uh, we'll be fighting through some more problems in decoded actually and not pipelines. Tomorrow, we're, uh, I think we're diving into searching algorithms this week. Um, we'll probably Probably uh, because we started to learn data structures in Go, we'll probably continue to stick with Go this week. And yeah, we're gonna be learning searching algorithms. So I'll probably teach you a few more. Um, I'll probably teach you a few more data structures, probably learn some binary search trees, uh, stuff like that. Um, and we'll actually like be solving some some searching problems and we'll teach you how to approach uh, solving those things um, and then sorting next week as well. But we'll be back for infrastructure as code. Um, you know, our Git issues have been worked out. Uh, so if you wanna learn how to write some pretty cool Terraform, we're gonna get a little fancy with Terraform on Wednesday um, and do some really cool stuff with that. Uh, so come through if you wanna come through, but that's it for this evening. Who in the world are we going to raid this evening? So I can go get some Din Din. It's gonna be so good. Again, everyone, Eric Dev, uh, the Alt F4, thank you so much for the help. That was fun. Um, <laughs> that was definitely fun. I was bad. I, here's the thing. 
the pro uh, uh, working on a relatively small team uh for the past few years the types of get issues we ran into were pretty simple um usually issues with uh you know weird uh rebase uh resolutions and stuff um and so it's very interesting uh how you know like you forget all of the dumb problems you can get into and then you don't use the stuff and then you're like bro i don't even know what this does anymore uh at all <laughs> so that was pretty fun though but yeah those problems they're they are always good to go down it's always interesting though how like what always intrigues me is that when i do solve git problems we didn't solve that one is i'm always like i always end up doing so much uh forensics so i'm trying to figure out how the heck i got into that place anyway um so it's it's, it's always pretty fun handle that frustration well I, I appreciate that if i i would have handled it much better if i wasn't hungry i am starving i am really starving because why am i starving because i want to look like the rock I'm working out to look like the rock and I haven't, you know, I, today I had my nice healthy meals and you know, a man, a growing boy, which is me, even though I'm already, you know, I think you stopped growing at, you know, mid twenties or something like that. A growing boy like me uh, needs his food. So now I gotta go get some food cause I'm dying. I was a master of fixing the repos. Uh, other people messed up. Yeah. So step away and leave to get directory alone. I can use the fix. I, I love it. That's the answer. I do love it. All right, so who are we gonna head over to say hello to on this fine evening? I feel like we have to go say hello to R.W. Grimm because R.W. Grimm is first and uh, we need to head over. Absolutely, go ahead and ask some questions real quick if you have to. I can't stick around for that long, but definitely ask a few questions for sure, Co with Sean. Strong mind, strong body, exactly. And again, I don't really care about looking like The Rock. I'm just trying to get healthier. And you know, I'm already, a, I'm a big guy and I can put on weight the good ways and the bad ways very easily. Like people are always like, oh man, I wanna be able to like get bigger stuff. I'm like, I don't really care about lifting weights at all to be honest with you. It's simply that my body likes to put on weight if I eat or put on weight if I lift. So I'd rather it be lifting weight rather than eating weight. <laughs> um, and I lift purely so that I'm not 500 pounds. That's the only reason I work out is to not be 500 pounds just so you know i do not enjoy it. it some people love it the rock seems like he loves it i don't i 100 would rather play warzone all day uh maybe some valorant as well uh, but yeah she's a recommendation i'm using pulumi to build several windows vms very interesting um i want to automate the install of applications on each vm what do you recommend they involve copying files setting license code so again that sounds like a uh uh, a use case for a nice configuration management tool. Um, I've never done any configuration management with Windows VMs, so it's very interesting, but I would probably recommend, I actually don't even know if Ansible runs on Windows. I'm not sure which of them runs on Windows, if any of them, uh, to be honest, but uh, Windows, I mean, I, I would recommend Ansible uh, if it does run on Windows. Let's see really quick, it does Ansible uh, work on, uh, look, it's listening to me. No. <laughs> okay. So not Ansible. You can't use Ansible. Uh, does a uh, chef, uh, run on windows. Okay. So it looks like you can do some stuff with chef and, oh, maybe, maybe puppet does as well. Uh, does puppet run on windows yeah i've actually done uh no windows is agnostic to the platform and supports windows fully with the same code that's used on linux or any cloud platform this is the answer eric dev gave it to you that's that is this is this is it look at this line that's the that's the most amazing thing i would ever want to hear um but you know it because that way you know you don't have to learn two different ways of doing it um phenomenal that is excellent I say go with the puppet again. I, I know very little about Windows. Uh, well, actually, I know a lot about managing Windows uh, servers manually. As you all know that I'm terrible with Windows as a consumer product, um, just because I was away from it for so long, even though I love it now, you all can't see my giant Windows desktop in front of me. I'm, I am a huge Windows fan now. Uh, to be honest, I just don't know how to do the little things. Uh, thank you everyone for helping me figure out my issues with Warzone and why it would not run properly. Uh, you guys helped me figure out that my memory, uh, I need to enable some stuff, uh, XMP profiles in my BIOS for memory. Uh, and now we're, you know, we're moving along. You know, we're, we're, we're doing great now. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead over and say hello to RW Grimm, who does some really dope stuff for the Pigeon platform and does some open source programming. So let's go ahead and hit that raid button slash raid. Uh, let's spell it right the first time, RW underscore. 
G R I M. Excellent. Thank you so much for all the help. Thank you everyone for coming through. I had a great time tonight. Now it's time to go get some din din and let's go ahead and enter button on that. And now we get the countdown in nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Everyone have a great night. Tell Mr. Grimm we all said hello.